All right, here we are. We're live once again. It's Tuesday. Is it already Tuesday? It feels like Tuesday. It definitely feels like Tuesday. <laughs> definitely feels like a Tuesday. Oh, so I have to rant about AI. I can't help myself. It it seems so topical, like like everybody's talking about AI, but we haven't said anything about AI. So I feel like now's the time. Um, so I'm just going to start that off by saying this live stream is certified organic. Like all, <laughs> all humans involved in this, no AI was used in the production of this video. Um, no, seriously. I mean, it's something that, you know, that we've talked about here. Like, does it fit into our business or how does it fit into our business or whatever? And I don't know. I, uh, the more that I learn about how these large language models are developed, the less I like it because I don't see how you could possibly train an, an LLM without, what's the right way to say this, Matt? I mean, with, without using source material that you don't own or don't have a license for, or you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I mean, like if, if e even though let, let's just take our website and I'm not saying that, that I've ever found source material or I've gotten an answer back from chat GPT that contained verbiage from our website. That's not what I'm saying, but I'm saying let's, as an example, if our website, which is, it is publicly available, obviously, if our website was scraped and used to train a large language model. I have an issue with that. It's cop. It's our copyrighted material. It's 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 our thoughts. It's our intellect. It's our collective effort being used to build that. I don't know that I like the idea of something coming along and scraping it to train an AI model. I, I don't see how that's even legal, to be honest with you. 
forget the compensation piece of it. There should at least be a consent piece. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. What do you think? I, I'm not a big. I, I think there is a right place for AI in some things, but I don't think it is in in replacing creativity and intelligence and skills that are learned. Um, yeah, you know, I, I I recently I was in this meeting and they did a group they did a presentation and it was a company that uses ai some some sort of ai to create business plans for you so you basically fill out a questionnaire it develops a business plan that you could then ostensibly take to your bank to get funding right i mean it's like, as an entrepreneur, writing a business plan and, and understanding every character of it is critical to your successes of, of running a business. It just is. And my fear is that what happens is if you get two people in similar businesses, they fill out the questionnaire in basically the same way. With some variation, they're going to have the same business plan. Like we're, the you, we're I, I, my fear is we're going to lose the uniqueness of who we are as individuals by putting our own thoughts and efforts and, and things like that into the products that we make, the the work product that we create. And I'm not talking about we as Atlas. I'm talking about we as humans. I would hate to see us lose that skill as a society. That's, I think, I think that's the fear, right? Yeah. Anyway, okay, rant's over with for now. I, I reserve the right to come back to it at a future date and time when it suits me. <laughs> okay, so, so just one last quick thing. If you're using this live stream to train your LLM, I hate you. Please stop doing it. Um, okay, there we go. Now I'm done. Um, so today we're talking about Wireless Warehouse. And deep dive, try to cover as much as we can in four hours. Um, it's a topic we get asked about eh, relatively frequently. Um, it is, you know, it's probably the, the add-on that I think for distributors can help you a lot, but it can also probably hurt you a lot. Um, my saying on that, Matt, has always been, it amplifies your process, no matter what. It, it takes a good process and, and automates it and makes it better. Mm -hmm. It takes a bad process and makes it worse because you can be bad faster. <laughs> so you, you, can, you can have bad process in real time. That's, that's, that's what happens. I don't know. Now, you've, you've worked with it in the past uh, line of business. I know I have. What? What's been your experience with it? Yeah, <clears throat> I, I think just to kind of expand on the, it, it's, to get a little geeky, it, it, it's like the uh, super soldier serum for Captain America, right? It amplifies what, it amplifies whatever is already existing. A good person becomes better, an evil person becomes more evil um, for any of you geeky people out there. So... If you have bad processes in place, i.e. you don't organize your warehouse in a way that makes sense, you don't have the correct um, bin IDs, you don't have your products labeled, and then all of a sudden you try to lay wireless warehouse on top of that, at best it's going to work poorly. Most likely people are going to get frustrated and just work around it. Um, so, and I think, I feel like we say this a bunch on these streams, it's do your planning before you launch something, whatever it is. I don't care if it's a report, a business rule, WWMS, um, purchasing, figure it out on paper before you just say, let's go with it. Yeah. Um, and, and I speak from personal experience on that of the struggles that come along with 
um, I'm doing that. And if you're a multi-location company, you know, WWS is location specific. So don't try to launch 10 locations at the same time. If, if you can afford to, you know, we all know every, every company has their good locations, like their, their, their cream of the crop location, you know, get the bugs worked out, take your time. And then once you get that one successfully launched, the, the, the following ones will be a lot easier. Yeah. Um, not easy, but easier. No, I, I agree. I agree a hundred percent. And you know, the, uh, you, you, you touched on, on a concept that I'm a big believer in, and that's, that's the fallacy of multitasking. So organizations, a lot of times can kid themselves into this concept of, oh, we can do more than one thing at a time. We can go live with five locations, you know, at the same time, rather than going, uh, we will go simultaneously instead of going in series. I think sometimes that's okay. Um, and, and it makes sense to do that. But then when you're trying to manage multiple projects at the same time and bring them to conclusion, and it's the, you know, at a place I used to work, we, we had this, uh, this kind of running joke. It's the same four guys, right? Like every initiative, everything, it, it always comes back to the same four people that are actually going to have to do the work to get it done. And so when you start multitasking the same resources over and over and over again, what you get is everything gets done much later. Whereas if you do it in series or in sequence, you get the benefit of the first thing much sooner. Then you can move to the second thing, get the benefit of that, then the next, and then the next, and then the next. It allows you to be much more focused and, and get a lot more done. And I know that's, that's a very contrarian point of view for how to get things done in an organization. But having been in many of them, I just, I'm not bought into multitasking anymore. Well, I mean, think about this. You, you know, as well as I do, anything that, whether it's custom or out of the box, anything you launch, you're going to run into bugs, problems yep. that you have to figure out. If you launch it at five locations, they're all going to have the same problems. Whereas if you do it in an order, you may work out a lot of those kinks and there's first and second by the time you get to third fourth and fifth you know it's old old hat at that point absolutely absolutely so you know so if you want to multitask it maybe a ramp up strategy let's start with one then add another and then we can add them two at a time right something like that that's a great idea yeah. cool well, where do you want to start with wireless warehouse um god i don't know um I, I guess how to properly set up and log in would be a a good starting point and, and maybe make people understand or, or try to explain how the personalized bins work for when you know when you have to I'm not a big I'm not a big proponent of the system allowing you to just make up a bin uh, I, I don't I've never liked that like to me I, I always felt like there should have been something that was assigned mm -hmm. to you or maybe just use your username <laughs> like something uh but i would say we would get in there and, and do that and then uh you know we can we need to look at settings and things like that and then we'll do some transactional stuff well i like the idea of doing the primer um so let's let's start with and we keep talking about bins. I, I i can't see it on our stream i see it on our i see it on the stream but i don't see it on Why not? our oh in the control yeah. room yeah, control room, I don't see it. Hang on. It's generally the other way around. Stand by. I, well, I've been focusing a lot of effort on not screwing up the intro here lately. Are you good now? Yeah, and this works. Can you see the system settings now? Yep, your... yep, yep. Okay. All right. So, um... All right, let's before before we get into this this whole thing, I'm just going to take it back to blank for a second. So w we keep using the word bin. Um, when you log into Wireless Warehouse, I, I guess we need to also talk about bin setup in general too. I mean, technically bins aren't exclusive to WWMS, but well, they are vital. They are vital. Yeah, 
are i think it is it's very important to discuss that as well so when you're set up for a wwms login this is what you're gonna see and when i say set up this is what i mean so you're gonna check the wwms login box down there and then that opens the the login this way and so you have a company id a location id and then a bin id okay when we say bin id fundamental concept of of the way that wireless warehouse works is your wireless device is a bin in p21 so it's it's technically the type is considered um, an rf bin radio frequency but it's an rf bin so it, it is a bin like any other now there are some you know like it, like rf bins don't natively show up in certain places in the system that you wouldn't want them to necessarily show up but but at its core it functions like any other bin in p21 so i think that's just something that's important to, to kind of key on a little bit um because i think it, it, it builds a good foundation for for understanding how the system works so we'll log go ahead and log in now what matt was talking about was as a user you could set that bin id to whatever you want we highly recommend having some training your users to have some sort of schema for what that looks like whether it's the user's the name initials of the, the name of the gun something um so that you know it's you know the same gun gets the same bit id from the same user every single time it's just going to make traceability a lot easier to manage um and only one person can be logged into an RF bin at a time. Correct. Um, so if, if somebody's logged into the APC01 bin already and somebody else starts another session, tries to log in, they're not going to be able to, which is a good thing. Um, okay. So where do you want to go? System settings? Okay, here we are. System settings, wireless warehouse. All right, so the checkbox up here is just to enable wireless warehouse. Once that's done, then you get into all the rest of these options. Tagging. I have, I have a lot of thoughts about tagging. Most of them are not positive. I, I've never actually even talk to anybody ever done it just because it's one of those things where again i don't think it's worth on a, this live stream because it's so it is hyper specific i agree right. um I, I would say if you're watching this live stream and you're considering using tagging shoot us a message let us know and we'd like to talk to you about it just so that you go into it eyes wide open yep. um wireless bin replenishment now that is the concept of we're going to take like an overstock bin and use the stock in there to replenish a primary bin that's closer to the shipping dock or something like that. Probably won't get too deep into that today. Um, pull to pick, I can't even remember what that does. I don't think I've ever used it. Um, second scan for single item bins. Okay. so. Something to think about when you're implementing wireless warehouse is you need, in my opinion, it is preferable to make the user experience, and I'm talking about the user that's using the, the wireless device, to make their experience as consistent as humanly possible. You don't want to have a system set up where it's like, oh, well, if it's this way, you have to you know, ship or receive this way. But, you know, if it's the third Tuesday in May and there's a full moon and Venus is aligned with Mars, you do it this way. And if it's this type of item, you do it that way or whatever. That's extremely confusing. It's very hard to train, um, my opinion. And so, so as you're going into it, like the more consistent you can be, no matter what the product, no matter what, what you know, what anything is, it always 
picks or receives the same way. I think that's advisable. So that was a long way around the horn to say, I kind of like the, the second scan for single item bins. Basically what we're talking about is options that are pre-filling things in for you. So if you go and scan a bin um, or get to that item and it's the only item in the bin, P21 may pre-fill that out for you and not force you to scan the item tag, the item label. I don't like that, personally. I want the bin scanned every time. I want the item scanned every time. And if applicable, I want the lot scanned every time. I mean, if not, what, what's the point? If you, it's like people putting item barcodes on a bin shelf, but not on the actual product. I'm yeah. like, that's a well, recipe that, for disaster. Yeah, I mean that doesn't. They don't know that that product's on there, uh, and I know people do it because sometimes you don't like it's a product that you can't label. Like it's impossible to stick a label to a sheet of metal. Mm -hmm. There's not. Uh, there's not a good way to stick a label on there, you know. But maybe at least tag it on the skid, you know. S but don't, putting it on the shelf is is a not a uh, great idea. No. Um, you know, if you're dealing with palletized material, let's say that, that you have a pallet come in and it's got 50 cases on the pallet. Um, one way that I've done it and it, and it's worked out really, really well is you, when you receive it in and print the item label, you affix the item label to like the lower right carton that's facing out. And then you train your people that you pick that carton last so that you that label is always going to be there on that skid of material until the very end when you empty off the skid. That I've seen work pretty well. That way you don't have to put 50 labels on, which is kind of can be. Well, ho hopefully most of the, like cross reference stuff is, is makes a lot easier. If, if you're um, yeah, if, if, if that is really that's primo. If you can get your vendors. Um, if they put a label on every carton that has barcodes on it, you can cross-reference that over. Or, you know, if you're ordering in private label, label material, have it labeled with your barcode. That's not a bad idea, especially if it's lock controlled. The less thumbing of stuff in that we're doing, I understand that we're in a text and we don't talk to each other anymore, society, but AI is going to fix all that. So. Well, talking about the user experience, one thing that I think most people struggle with adoption on this, at least for my personal experience, and not even just with WM, any, any kind of wireless system is management tries to sell this as, oh, it's going to make your job so much faster. It's like, no, no, no. It's going to make your job more accurate, not mm -hmm. faster. Yeah. It's going to be more, more efficient in the fact that it may take you an extra 20 or 30 seconds now but it saves an email later. It saves a phone call later. It says a second shipment later when you're having to fix mistake picking mistakes. Yeah. And, and I think that's just a, people don't like change. Oh, I know where it is. I'll yeah. just go get it. Yeah. Uh, well, and that's like, so for, for people that are trying to implement this or are part of the team that's implementing, or if you're on the management team or whatever, you, that is the what Matt just said. In my experience, is the single largest risk to not having buy-in at the user level. So here's my example story. I went and consulted with a distributor, and they said we have got to do something with wireless warehouse because it is it is slowing us down by half. Like it is it is slowing us down fifty percent. And I'm like, okay. I said, I'm going to follow your best order picker around for f four hours. And I did. And you know what was interesting in that four hours, Matt? The scan gun level never left the packaging table. <laughs> it stayed there the entire time. This guy took the paper pick ticket, went and pulled all the material, brought it to the packing table, sorted it all out, then went and put everything away, then picked up the scan gun, and he never once pulled the trigger. It was all on the keypad. This was back in the keypad days, like on an MC9090. And 
he's he just did everything manually. And so I went back and talked to the manager and I was like, wireless warehouse cannot possibly be slowing you down 50% because you're not even using it. Right. That's reality. If your users get frustrated, they are going to work around the system. And the real danger of that in wireless warehouse is material is going to start physically moving in the system. And there's going to be no record of that movement in your computer system, which means your computer is going to think that that inventory is an A1 and you're going to go to A1, bin A1, and it's not going to be there. That's what's going to happen if your users don't get it and aren't bought into it. So that is something to keep in mind. Um, wireless confirmation, approved PO receipts, approved transfer receipts. So these two check boxes I found out this morning, if you check these, that's what enables all the location-based settings. Like they're not even on screen unless you say, okay. these two boxes are checked, right? Um, use wireless label printing. I don't think I've ever known a company that didn't use wireless label printing. Um, I certainly would recommend it at least, and you can control which labels you do, but I would absolutely use the, the sales order, uh, or the, um, the picking label, the, oh, the ship item label where like you, you make the pick and then a label rolls off for you to affix to what you pick. I like that. Maybe some companies don't, I don't know, but the companies we work with, I like it. Um, transfer undership disposition. This is either back order or cancel. So this is what happens when you short a transfer. What's your default move going to be? Are you going to back order it or cancel it? Um, if you hit back order, uh, it's going to create a TBO transfer back order. I'm not a huge fan of those. Um, I would much rather nope. see it get canceled. And if somebody really needs it, they can put in another transfer for it. Uh, again, it's just my opinion. If you're using Torg, that's not really even a, an imposition. Uh, display the update was successful message. Okay. So, you know, I, uh, I'm not a fan. It's just, it's just noise to me, Yep. you know? And again, it's going to be noise to the people that are going to be the least accepting of this. Yeah. So if you can minimize the noise. Yeah, here's, here's another Minimize. universal truth about computer systems. The more you pepper people with pop-up messages, the less they read them. Mm -hmm. That's that's a fact. I feel like we've mentioned that a few times. I feel like we're going to mention it a few more. Um, enter and save. Enter as save and next keystroke and receipts. Um, I, you know, I think that's okay. I mean, that's better than having to poke around on screen. So I get it. You push enter and advances you through the screen, put away strategy. Your options here are to use the put away algorithm or to first use primary bin and then the put away algorithm. Um, that just gets into how the system's going to direct you through the warehouse to, to do a put away. Um, I, I would say if you're going to use primary bin and put away al algorithm, um, I mean, we're getting kind of into the concept of random warehousing and, and we can certainly talk about that when we get to that point. I think maybe when we're talking about bins is, is a good time to, to talk about that. But, um, uh, if you're going to do primary bin and put away, I think you need to make sure that you have your, your volumes and max weights and all that figured out. Um, that that's my opinion and make sure that those are implemented right. Uh, empty bin strategy. Are you going to suggest empty bins? Are you going to put them in zone sequence? Are you going to put them last? I would tend to say you would put them in zone sequence um, or last is fine. Are, are you clicking the drop down? Uh, I am, but you can't. You the It's on this Mac. The, the, the way that it generates the, the drop down, it's, it's, like part of the OS, so that's weird because normally I could see it on on our on our thing. Could, uh, obviously, I can never see in the stream, but yeah, no, I, I'm going to try to just select the different ones. So, I mean, empty bins last, I think, is a is also a good way to do it because it's like, hey, let's try to put it somewhere where it already lives, and if we can't do that, then we'll suggest an empty bin. Uh, group pick sequence is either going to be bin pick, 
warehouse sequence ascending or a warehouse sequence descending. Single pick sequence, this one's interesting. So you have your bin sequence is a possibility. You have line item number, paper. If you're gonna send, okay. If you're going to send your people out into the warehouse with a pick ticket and a scan gun, I would tend to lean toward paper because at least then they match yeah. um, and it's less confusing. Then you have a uh, primary bin and then you have warehouse ascending and warehouse descending. I actually, my, my real preferred way is to take the time to set the sequencing up in the warehouse and go off warehouse sequence. That's, I like that. Start pick at heaviest line. This is situational, I, and I hate that it's a system setting. I, I really would rather see this at the location level because different locations move product differently. But if you're trying to build a base, like, you know, it's a 2,000 pound order and 1,500 pounds of it is the first item, is as an item, and you want to build your base of your skid with that heaviest item, this is a good good way to start that. Um, again, it's. I, I wish it was a little bit more than just on or off system wide. Yeah. We we tried to use warehouse sequence to kind of control how we picked things with that were heavy. Yeah. That because we weren't really where I came from. Heavy as coils or sheets. Yeah. And. Um, so we would always sequence those and arrange our warehouse to where they're closest to the shipping bay. Mm -hmm. So so you're getting them last and you're not having to... It's not trying to tell you to drag them around. Yeah, for sure. Which hopefully nobody would do. Um, prompt for cereals during a PO receipt when tracking outbound cereals only. I think that must be checked by default, but I, it's like... Well, if you're only tracking outbound serials, why are you trying to put a serial in on an inbound transaction? Yeah. I'm guessing this somebody needed this at one point and they just made it into a system setting. Um, next is clear suggested deposit bin between receipts. So um, we had some questions uh, from Indy, who's back from last week. Thank you. Welcome back. We're so happy you're here. And... This is trying to process a PO receipt in the wireless warehouse. When I get to the put in bin, it's blank, even though we already have stock of the item being received. Shouldn't the deposit bin field be populated with the bin location where the product already is so that we use the same location for the new receiving? Oh, and good morning. And thanks for doing this live segment. So happy to be here. Thank you. Um, I would... So one thing you might look at is this checkbox down at the very bottom left of system settings and see if you're setting it up to clear the deposit bin between receipts. We're going to leave ours turned off and see if it makes a difference. And what we may be into here is what your put away strategy is and so on and so forth. So uh, we'll try to kind of pick that apart, I think, as, as we go through this and see if we can figure out why you're having that issue. But start there. See if you're telling it to clear the suggested deposit bin between receipts. Um, okay, then are you going to use the wireless workbench? I'm a fan. I mm -hmm. like wireless workbench. And and we're going to spend some time on that today. Um, sp specify warehouse pick zone first. So if you're using zone picking, um, are you going to prompt the user to put in their zone before they put in their transaction number? Um, require lot scan and picking. So this goes back to that use second scan for single item bins. Um, yeah, I like requiring that lot scan. I don't care if there's only one lot in there, supposedly. This is a good way to make sure that your inventory is what you think it is, is by requiring that confirmation scan every single time. And it's consistent. There's not going to be this. Sometimes I get prompted for a lot. Sometimes I don't. Uh, cancel remaining underpicked quantity on a sales order. We've got some people that use this uh, for like, they're doing VMI and they're going out every week. And, and so their VMI will pick up whatever that unfilled quantity is. And so they'll just go ahead and cancel out uh, whatever was underpicked. Um, 
lock physical count by bin or allow multiple users on the same count. Um, approve on the fly inventory adjustments in WWMS picking. Okay, this is one y'all need to think about because <laughs> a user can straight up take 10 grand out of inventory without batting an eye or put 10 grand in. So negative. This might be negative. one that you want to uncheck. Um, enable multi-user receiving on a PO. So this allows more than one person to, to work on checking in a PO. Um, and include pick and hold items on final sales order pick ticket. I'm actually, I don't have a lot of experience with pick and hold. Um, Me neither. So I can't really speak too uh, much on that. I, I, I want to soapbox on the approve the inventory. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go ahead and uncheck it so we don't trigger you today. But go and, ahead. And, and, it's not a knock on the people that are working in the warehouse. It's they shouldn't have to have that responsibility even available to them because somebody, you know, it's not even a malicious thing, but if somebody screws up, really, should that be on them to be able to make that kind of adjustment? I've never, never liked the fact that that was an option. Well, we had a customer that, so so here's here's kind of the issue, number one. Um, there are a lot of prompts in Wireless Warehouse when you're doing things. And if you, if you underpick something because there wasn't enough quantity there, you get prompt. If you overpick it, whatever. And and some of these prompts, they're not super clear with the language that ships out mm -hmm. of the box. And you'll you'll make an inventory adjustment and not even realize you're making an inventory adjustment. And and we have seen that to to the point where I think what we ended up doing for one customer, and this was a large distribution center we set up business rules that would automatically answer those questions. And then we replaced it with, oh, is this inventory missing? Yes. And when they clicked yes, it would just send a notification to the warehouse lead to say, hey, we got missing inventory. Here's the item. Here's the bin. Go figure it out. Um, and basically took that responsibility away from the order picker. Um, we've also done a modification that I thought was interesting where if you picked a bin clean, right? So you, you executed a pick that supposedly took all of the material of that item and lot, uh, out and they were using single item bins, by the way, these were very small spaces. They only put one item in a bin, but when you picked it clean, it would prompt you and say, hey, the inventory quantity in this bin should be zero. Is it? And if the user clicked yes, we would count that as a cycle count. Oh. And and go up, set its date last counted and create a cycle count record for it. I didn't think that one up. The customer did. I thought that was a really good idea. Just some oh, yeah. built-in extra cycle counting, you know, confirming that your inventory is what it's supposed to be. I really liked that one. Um, any other soapbox issues on the screen? No, no. You good? I, I think we just need to save and log in, log out, and log back in okay. because we've made some changes. We did make changes, didn't we? Uh, and we should preface this by saying, make sure all of your testing and playing is being done in a play environment. I'm surprised that you haven't said anything about how much faster our test P21 is running today. I, I have, I noticed it's it's a different, uh, it is, is it a whole different system? It is. Yeah, I set it up okay. this morning. And I even made sure there's some pick tickets and POs in there. Nice. Uh, locate, yeah, let's say location maintenance. Yeah, it's very peppy this morning. It is. Well, it's because we're not trying to make the information travel 5,000 miles. <laughs> the other side of the world it's more like a couple hundred feet <laughs> so all right um you want to take us through this oh it's been a while uh wireless warehouse options to enable it for the location right yep. yes uh, uh this wireless warehouse 
message in picking, I believe if you start trying to mess around in the shipping window, it prompts you to remind you that it's a wireless warehouse location, I think. Yes. Yeah. What it'll do is if you still are trying to ship, I mean, cause you, there's nothing that stops you from shipping an order through P21 first doing it through wire. But yeah, we found that very quickly was very annoying that, you know, everything, it, cause it's not like it's ordered, like this location is set up for what. So even if you're just creating out a, a ticket to, to invoice something out for a correction, in shipping you get the stupid warning yeah so i'm not a fan allow allocation of under shipments um i can't under ship so if you under ship does it i guess that's a, does it go back and allocate keep that material allocated on the sales order maybe maybe I, I don't know if i've ever actually played with that setting I, I don't think i have either um the next one's disabled tie transfer scheduled to door bins that seems kind of hyper specific to me yeah um i would assume you'd have to be using scheduled transfers for that i don't know print packing list from sales order picking so this is kind of player's choice i think you know it just depends on what your process is uh same with print packing list for from transfer picking so this here, here you go. Here's another opportunity for soapbox. Are we going to adjust in found items? So if you get to that bin and there's something there that's not supposed to be there, I'm not exactly sure how. I mean, I, I say I'm not sure how you would know that, but I mean, I, I can think of scenarios where, oh, hey, item A is supposed to be here, but it's actually item B. Are you going to allow that to be adjusted in? Ah, to me again, uh, I, I I think it's. Uh, I, I, I would, when it comes to inventory is not in the right location, I, I really, I'm, I'm going to coin a phrase here. I think you really need to take a Paul Blart approach to that. Ob what? Observe and report, you know? <laughs> Only if you're on a segue. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, 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 I'm Mall with cop references, yeah. not I, I expecting. I mean, I have, I have to work at this, man. It's, you know, it's part of show prep. Uh, I can't laugh at my Captain America reference then. <laughs> I wasn't. Look, to be fair, the only thing that had me scratching my head is that you made it, but you're wearing your Top Gun t shirt today, not your Captain America t shirt. That is true. So I true. It's just, you know, I was confused. Um, so, so yeah, I, I'm with Matt, though. I, I am not a big fan of just like, hey, let's just start adjusting things. That, that makes me nervous. Um, it just does. And Indy says that is unchecked on their setup. Okay, so cool. We, we will do not let us forget to try to run, um, run that problem down as we start demoing this. Um, I think it's totally conceivable that Matt and I will end up on some complete tangent that might not even have anything to do with P21. Um, you know, not that that's ever happened before, but it's it's possible. It's possible. And then we get into session defaults. Uh, picked order movement. I... I've only really messed with picked order movement once and we did a major modification for it. Like we were creating bins automatically and stuff like that. Um, but I guess that's how like you can move, you can put pick tickets together if they have the same ship to or using the same carrier and same route. It allows you to move a lot of material at one time, basically. Uh, and the, the concept I believe is a consolidation bin where like you're, you're consolidating everything into this bin and then mm -hmm. moving it around. Um, where yeah, we're familiar with, we're familiar with these other settings. <laughs> we are. Yeah. A little bit. Right, right. So, so once you've enabled the two check boxes we talked about in system settings, then, then you get into these transactions where you're saying purchase order receipts are going to be approved at the location level and your, either going to allocate automatically or just do receive only again i'm going to say it i know everybody probably already knows it receive only doesn't always mean receive only linked back orders are still going to allocate my my <laughs> suggestion is mimic what you do what your settings are at your regular like in p21 po receipts if you're if you're allocating inventory automatically there do it here do it here if you receive only there 
receive only here. Don't don't make it different. two different processes. Yeah. And and you just touched on something else that that I, I want to talk about as well, just as far as process versus computer goes. Um, then you, you have the same you have the same settings at the transfer level. So those and that's good. And then uh, one label per unit of measure, one label per skew, or a fixed number of labels that you can specify are what the defaults are going to be. This cracks me up um, because I actually did this as business rules like 10 years ago. Oh. <laughs> where we could go into the location and say, how many labels do you want? And and it would, whenever that would pop up, that business rule would kick in. So thanks, Epicor, for trying to put me out of business. Um, all right. So... Okay, what I wanted to talk about was, is actually over here on the inventory tab. When you're mapping out how you're going to use wireless warehouse, you need to, to the best extent possible, make the physical process match the digital process, okay? Um, so here's a, for instance, oh, we're going to set up our system to receive into the primary bin. Okay. But is that what you physically really do? Do you physically pull material off the truck and take it directly to the primary bin? I've never seen anybody do that. <laughs> I haven't either. If you do fine. But most of the time, what I see is people will pull off the truck and it sits in a staging area on the receiving floor where it gets checked in. If that is your physical process, that would also need to be your digital process. Because you're, you, you actually then have a couple of different things going on. The receipt goes to the receiving floor. Then you're doing a put away to move the goods after check-in from the receiving floor to wherever their home's gonna be. Um, so if that is your process, my recommendation is to set up a default bin for PO receipts and transfer receipts. And that could be, called, we see like ours is called rec. You could call it rec floor. We've seen it called rec hold or receiving, whatever you wanna call it. If the process is the UPS driver unloads right on your dock, and you know, and then takes off and then you have to check everything in, then at the moment that you receive it into the system, you want it to receive into the place where it actually physically sits. Because if someone prints a pick ticket, immediately after that happens, they need to understand that that material is not in the primary bin. It's on the receiving floor and that's where you need to go to find it. If and your receiving bin is set up to be pickable true that is true i'll give you that I, I i've seen that's the most common thing but i have seen some people use i don't know what the official there's an official term for it but i can't remember what it is they essentially have a stack of cones for lack of a better word with pre-assigned bin labels like they're they actually have each have their own bin barcode on them mm -hmm. and especially if you're receiving skids of stuff they may grab one of those scan that set it on top of the product so because your receiving location could be you know massive oh 14 yeah. bays long yep a and so if you have a you know there, there's a term for it i don't remember what it's it's called um but essentially it's it's cones that you could just read it's it's you go to a restaurant and order something and they're like oh here's this number yeah somebody will bring you your food you know, it's that kind of tagging system where it's it's a reusable bin, essentially. Yeah. But there's some industry term for it, but I can't remember what it is. Whataburger does thinking. that, and now I just want Whataburger, so thanks. I was thinking of Chick-fil-A, so I wanted a frosted lemonade. Mm. They're so good. So it's been a good live stream. Um, <laughs> no. All right. Time. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, I, I like that idea. Um, I also like, you know, you said... Your receiving floor could be 14 bays long. Um, again, this is the default. It can always be overridden right. when you deposit. But um, but if you've got 14 different bays, 
each one of those bays can be a location so that right. again, you're scanning it to where the, the, that's the most important thing is you're scanning it to where it actually lives. Yep. Um, and uh, it, I could see a scenario and, and if I had a massive distribution center, I wouldn't be doing this live stream, but if I was running a large distribution center where we had, you know, five receiving docks, you know, one door right after the other, what I might be inclined to do is set my default um, bin to rec just like this and then have each of my dock doors be a bin and set it up to where if you tried to save a receipt or advance through a receipt with the default of REC, have a business rule that errors that out and says, nope, you've got to scan the dock bin um, and use it as a control mechanism to make sure that inventory is landing where it's supposed to be. And I know we keep harping on this, but there's a lot of reasons for this. Number one, it's very easy to train. Hey, you're standing on dock bay one. You will scan material into dock bay one. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Another thing is if dock bay one is empty and there's nothing sitting in it, you should be able to go pull an inventory card report for dock bay one and there should be nothing in it. And that is a good QA check for your receiving. Whenever I go visit a warehouse, one of the things I'll ask the floor manager or the warehouse manager, whatever his title is, or her, who's your best person? Oh, it's such and such. What do they do? Oh, they're, they're an order picker. No. Your best people need to be in receiving. If, if material gets put away correctly, there's a 50% chance that picking is going to go well. Because at that point, it's binary, right? It's either going to be <laughs> right or wrong. If receiving is done poorly, there is a 0% chance that picking is going to go well. So I know it seems counterintuitive. You want to put your best people in spots where they're going to be highly productive. Um, but I, I really truly believe that your that your most quality individuals, the ones that really care, that really do a great job, get them into receiving because they are going to set the pace for the rest of your warehouse operation. I mean, they're they're going to be the ones that prevent a lot of mistakes from being made just by virtue of them doing a good job at what they do. That's. That's just my opinion, but I think it's probably a good one. Um, so anyway, all of that to say, however you do it, there needs to be parity between how you physically do it and how you flow it through the system. And, and if you have that, then, you know, it's like I said, it's really easy to train people of, hey, you're going to coming off the truck. You're going to receive it here on the floor. Then you're going to do a, a wireless put away cell for system directed, whatever however you want to do that, but you're going to use a put away uh, transaction to move it from the receiving floor to wherever it's going to go. Um, one thing I wanted to mention, if you're watching this and you're not implemented yet, hopefully, hopefully, whoever helped you do your implementation, or you're not implementing wireless yet, but you've already implemented P21, Hopefully they have set you up for success by having everything in no bin already. Uh, Cause if you're going from no bins at all, meaning in no bin is a bin ID that is used to set, it's basically like a pre. It's like setting. it's a bin location, but it doesn't really mean anything. Right. And, and when you only have one bin in your system, no bin, you don't have to interact with putting that bin anywhere. Once you have more than one bin, for that item then then you're kind of screwed but if not that's a pain you're gonna have to that's a lot of work to go back and try to unwind that of having inventory not in bins um the easiest way to do it honestly matt and we have taken people through this process if you're not set up on the front end for that 
the best thing you can do is do an inventory import that removes all of the inventory from that look from that warehouse and then you re-import it back in same cost same quantity but with the bin records yeah so that that allows you to do all the bin work in excel get it into a text file and then like i said you just pull everything out of inventory and put it all right back in with bin codes that's so if you find your, yourself in that spot just reach out to us yeah call us we know we know people um okay where else do we want to go you said you wanted to talk about bins right yeah just because i mean again bins are and i and i i'm an advocate of if you know you're going to wireless warehouse at some point and your company has never done bins and all that you don't have to wait until you have guns in your hands to hey careful now that that could actually get us like we could get we could get a youtube slap for you know having a gun in your hand wireless oh. device they're wireless, wireless device yeah, yeah, wireless well, device. yeah i mean um <laughs> because really wireless picking is just digital pick tickets it, yeah so it, you know I'm not a big fan of going from we do no bin organization to oh we're going straight to wireless and I'm like you know kind of ease them <laughs> ease them into that process um, another suggestion before you go in and start putting bins and sequence um, you don't have to use a CAD program I, I, I did mine in Excel I, I basically took my bin layout or, or my warehouse layout of my shelving and figured out okay what path do i want to send pickers through with my sequences and my bins and all that kind of stuff um again i feel like we say it all the time you know pre-planning <laughs> makes execution more successful um you know th there are different opinions on how you should pick some people like the S pattern where you go down one and then you come back down. you know, some people want to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, just get it down on paper first it is, or, or an Excel document, which you have your, your bins laid out in. Um, yeah. Traffic flow through a warehouse is really important. And this is, this is a good spot to start talking about random warehousing. Um, I mean, you, you really have a couple of choices on how you do things in a warehouse. You've got a place for everything and everything in its place, right? Um, or you have random. Those are the two really big ways to do it. And You're going to be shocked. I'm not a fan of random. So I, th I, th I get it, but I'm not a fan. Okay, well, maybe I can change your mind. At, at certain scale, random is a huge advantage. Here's why. 80-20 rule. 80-20 rule, right? 80% of your inventory movement is going to be 20% of your items. You're going to have those 10, 15, 50 items, however many it is. When there's 15 people picking, they're going to clog up on those popular items. So when you get to high scale, random warehousing makes a lot of sense because it takes those fast movers and spreads them out in the warehouse so that people are not competing for space in the aisle to pull material. That's that's where I see it being an advantage. Now, in a small warehouse, things are <clears throat> pickable from the floor or, or even with equipment, it doesn't really matter, but particularly when you can pick from the floor because you're using like wire shelving or whatever. Um, I agree. A place for everything and everything in this place makes a ton of sense. Um, the other place where I think random helps, um, I've seen this in the pipe fittings uh, distributors a couple of times. Look at what your item code layout is. Okay, so let me give you this item code. Uh, let's see, it would be 040404TCI. And then right next to that is 040304TCI. And then right next to that is 040204 or 040402. So you start to have these, you start to have these item IDs that at a glance are extremely difficult to identify. Random works good there too. 
because it takes all these like item IDs and gets them away from each other. Um, well, but if you're scanning, that shouldn't be a problem. I agree. Well, <laughs> so he, here's, and again, this is, this is, uh, I, I get the, the clogging thing, mm -hmm. but then at the same argument I would have is it, I like, it, it, it's really, it's your business specific, right? Like yeah. how your product lines and, you know, if you're selling something where people stock a bunch of the same product line, just in different quantities, then, you know, if you're picking one set of items, but you have to go to 20 different places and they're not organized and you have to spend time to organize them, you know, at the packing station or whatever you want to call it. My other issue is in randomness, you could potentially take a, I always like my A mover items or my 20 closer to the dock. Because I, I want to be able to go and get those out. I don't want to have to go to the end of a huge warehouse to go pick something and bring it front. But, uh, you know. I, I, the, I agree. The only plus side I will give to randomness for me is it drops the, oh, I know where that is. Yeah. Because then they don't have a choice. Like, they're not going to know where it is because the system's just going to tell you where to go. So so we have actually done some stuff with that where where we have a mix um and you have a quick pick area where so the problem is with your super high movers you can't possibly put them all in the quick pick area you Too have much. to carry more inventory than you have space for so so what we did in that case was we said okay we want to restock this bin twice a week so we're going to keep three, we're going to keep an average of three days worth of inventory in this bin. Yeah. And so we had set up a put away strategy that said, if it's an A, I think we, we tagged them in a special ABC class, like A1. If it's an A1 item, we want to push it into the quick pick area up to the point that the quick pick bin is full and then let the overflow go to random. And then yeah. we would just restock. So there's a lot of different ways to cut this. And and again, none of them are wrong. It's no, they're not. Right. It's, it's, it's just got to be right for your business. It's kind of like what we always say for replenishment methods, right? The best operations are going to use all the tools available for them. Yep. And, and so there's arguments to be made either way. Um, so before we do bins, I thought maybe we should talk bin type and bin zone because those have some some things in them. So I've got bin zone, uh, or excuse me, bin type is up right now. Mm -hmm. uh, take us through. Well, these are pretty much set up by default, right? You have your inventory. Um, well, it, it's how fancy do you want to get? So like I can show you in this system, uh, they are company specific, by the way. So you can change them company to company. Because there's what, staging or shipping? I yeah, so staging. like we have... Like we, we would say is these are bins where inventory for picking is stored. These yeah. are QC bins, you know, like like stuff that's sitting in this type of bin needs to be QC'd. This is a receiving bin. This is a bin. A shipping bin is one that you're depositing to, you know, where it's going to go out. Um, and then test bin is when I couldn't think of anything else to call it. We called it test. Um so go ahead um why is puttable grayed out because if it's pickable it has to be puttable gotcha so obviously if you set up a which hopefully you would not set up your inventory bins type uh not puttable because that would be a disaster yeah i don't know i don't know what you're doing um uh, but obviously it it's it, it, it common sense puttable means you can put inventory in there pickable means that if a pick ticket is generated this bin if it has quantity and the algorithm says hey this is the bin you need to pick from it's eligible to pick uh, some people will set their receiving bins to not be they're puttable but not pickable because maybe you don't want your your pickers in the receiving area grabbing stuff off of skids cutting skids off you know it's it's however you're allowed to do it um quarantine should only be used for quarantine type in my opinion um quarantine does some i've never really used it but i know 
it has a whole like in, in the net stock calculation. Yeah, it, so it, it's 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 misunderstood, I think, and 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 maybe that's just because of the way that it's implemented in P twenty one. But um, if you have, let's say that you have an order and it's allocated, okay, mm -hmm. and you take the inventory and you move it to a quarantine bin because it was allocated before it went to quarantine it it can stay allocated okay but if you enter another order for that material that's in quarantine it will not allocate to what's in the quarantine bin that's weird why would why would it leave it if i'm saying this is quarantine why would it still allow it to still stay, stay allocated? Out, yeah i know it's weird and and you just need to understand that that's how it works. I mean, okay. you know, I, I think that's that's really all you can say. Uh, but yes, that you know, quarantine in, uh, material I believe does affect the net stock calculation. It certainly shows up in IMI and you know other stock status windows. Um, I've never Wait. messed with way station picking area or back. Yeah, and I, I'm guessing there's probably got to be some system setting somewhere. Because I've never, I've never done that back flush. It cannot be changed if it is linked to bins with a quantity allocated greater than zero. Sure. I don't know what back flush is. Quarantine pickable. I can't even make the. Uh... You can't take puttable off because there's already inventory in there. Yeah, I, I can't even make that come up. Um, but. Uh, how many of these bin types do you need? I, I don't know. I mean, what I showed of, of how this system is set up is kind of typical of how I would tend to set them up. Because if you're going to start running reporting on the back end or stuff like that, it, um, it makes it a little easier to do reporting and say, hey, show me everything that's going in in my bin types that are X, you know, no. uh, something like that. I mean, most common I've seen is inventory quantity or inventory ship receive and then quarantine is the most I've ever seen anybody actually use because this is not to confuse it with zones. Um, zones I've seen people using a lot of different because there's put away zones and pick zones, um, which I'm sure we'll get to. Oh, for sure. Um, okay. So... And obviously active. And active. I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, there's nothing, nothing, which obviously if there's inventory in a bin, in a, in a, if there's bins with inventory set to this type, you're not going to be able to make it inactive. Right. Uh, but that, that's true. Everything in P21. And it'll tell you that. So zones are settable at, uh, there, there's two different screens. There's a pick zone and a put zone or put away zone, uh, maintenance. And this is to represent more physical areas of a warehouse. Yeah. Right. Like if you have a showroom that you allow, you know, maybe that's showroom zone or you have, you know, and again, I'm speaking from my background. We had coil zone. You know, you, you have bins in different zones. One thing that we've used this for to pretty great effect is in smaller warehouses where you have a lot of the warehouse can be picked from the floor without equipment, but then part of the warehouse, it's too high for you to reach and you have to have equipment. Mm -hmm. We'll split into the high zone and low zone. And what that allows you to do then is start running a reporting to say, okay, show me everything in the high zone that's getting picked more than once a month. And let's bring those items down into the low zone and then vice versa to mm -hmm. get the stuff that's not being touched up in the high zone. Then your pick path is set up to run you through the low zone first, all the way through, mm -hmm. then come back and run you through the high zone. So, uh, or you could reverse it, whatever, but you would say, Hey, I want to get through the warehouse on the floor, which means I might walk right by some of these high zone bins but right. I can keep walking. I don't have to get on equipment and I can just get on equipment at the end 
and get everything like that. So if your warehouse is set up that way, it, it's, it's a pretty good strategy um, that we've been pretty successful with, especially with the reporting of moving things between zones as yeah. selling patterns change. Yeah, you know, I, I've used it, like I said, for types of product that we're storing in mm -hmm. certain bins and also for overstock locations. Um, you can also use it for, for legit zone picking. So like when you right. enable that system setting to a specified zone, so what happens is people are picking the same order but only their zone, and right. then they're depositing into a consolidation bin. Right. So like if you have products that you, you can easily go pick by hand that's in, you know, floor or zone one or low zone. And then I'm going to go through and pick the high zone stuff because I'm driving the cherry picker. Yep. Now, whoever deposits first into that consolidation bin, the next person is going to be prompted to deposit into the same location. That's how that will work. If you so that's have, how they know yeah. which bin to put it in. But it's all driven off of who's first. And so that big project I was telling you that we did, that was a mess. And so we were creating consolidation bins that were the pick ticket number mm -hmm. and then forcing that to be entered. So that... So you saying who's on first? What's, yeah, what's on second? I don't know. <laughs> all right. Um, what What is the... Um exclude bin from lot bin item like i'm not entirely certain i've not ever tried to mess i mean with that. it reads to me that hey any bin that's in this zone can't be allocated that's what it reads like to me that's a, that's the only logical thing i could come up with again we'll say this um just because there's a checkbox in P21 doesn't mean it is actually a function that relates to your business. Yeah, I mean, I would have to play with that. To, in, unless you're saying that, I mean, like if you had an overflow area and all you wanted to do was replenish bins from it, if that's what that actually does is keeps you from allocating material on those bins on a pick ticket, okay. But then what happens if that's all the inventory you have? Yeah, I'm not a big fan. I think that would be very specific to to someone. Hey, Soyo's back. <laughs> All right. We got a few people watching today. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Um, okay, so that gets through pick zones. And put-away zones are basically the same, just on the put-away side. So now we're talking about the actual bins themselves. All right, you have to give it a bin type, obviously. And, and, and these are lo company location specific. And, and so just stepping back to the quarantine thing, if you have a quarantine bin, the only way to specify it as a quarantine bin is to set up a quarantine bin type and then make the bin that type. There's right. not a quarantine bin setting. It right. works based on the type. Right. Um, Pick lock and put lock. Okay. Um, there is, and I cannot remember what the prompts are. But it's like if you go to a bin to make a pick on the, the wireless device. Um, it's a crazy world we're living in. There's, I, I want to say there's a way that it prompts you that you can answer a question that will actually pick lock the bin. It's like, oh, were you not able to pick this? Blah, blah, blah. I can't even remember what the phrasing is, but the, and it may not even be there anymore. I just remember back in the day when I was doing this every day, like there was a way it would prompt you. And if you said yes, it would pick lock the bin. Mm. Um, and it's, it's basically like, the idea being, hey, this bin is damaged and you, no one should touch it. Right. Um, same thing with, with uh, put locked. Full, that's determined by the system based on what you're saying the, the weights and volumes are. And if you've hit that max weight or volume, if your dimensions and weights are not properly set in P21 for your items, don't mess with this. Yeah. Because you're just going to create a lot of heartache for yourself. But saying that your weights 
I mean, Dimension should be set up properly on your They items. should, but I'm trying to, you know. <laughs> um, frozen for counting, that would come up during... I guess we're going to have to do cycle counts and physical counts and at some point. Um, weight, that's pretty self-explanatory, and that's what he was just talking about. Um, I'll jump to the right. I know we normally go down the dimensions kind of play into that too that's that's setting your volume up for mm -hmm. you know again this only matters you know if this is a 12 by 12 by 12 bin and your product is 15 by 15 by 15 but the system doesn't know that <laughs> it's not going to do you any good right um consolidation bin i don't think i've ever really so that gets back into picked order movement and that's what i was talking okay. about that's the bin that's your your it's almost like an it's kind of like an rf bin i mean they can be physical locations too but but essentially what you're saying is this is a bin where we're collecting different picks from different pickers for mm -hmm. the same order ship to carrier it's all going to flow into this consolidation bin um door and staging i've not really used um but but that is what consolidation is for um, these are the put away and pick zones. These are the zones that we just talked about. Um, more importantly, especially on, for me, on the picking side, the put away sequence, sure, whatever. But I mean, you're, it's, it's rare that you're, I think it's more important. I mean, you still should have them set up, but to me, the pick zone sequence or warehouse sequence, whichever one you're using is, is most important. Um, and it's basically just the order in which, because I believe if you leave this as zero, does it just do alpha and numeric at that point? Yeah, it does. And Wh which is, it's bad if you have overstock bins because it, it's, it's just going to try to go this way up and down. I mean, I have literally seen this where the client said, oh, well, you know, we just let it sort alphabetically and that's how our bins are set up in the warehouse. So it's fine. Actually, it's not fine because when you walk down the aisle mm -hmm. and A1 is on your left and B1 is on your right, the net yep. effect is I'm going to walk down this aisle and then come <laughs> right back up it. Yeah. <laughs> and then go down it again. Uh, tip for pick sequence or warehouse sequence, whichever. Uh, leave spaces. Like don't 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 go a one, a two three four and give it one two three, because you don't have an a four. Yeah, because you if might you do that. Right. So minimum, like, because you can go as high. I don't know how many digits it is. I'm sure it's. We enough. usually did tens. Ten, like I about to say, ten ten will cover you. 99.9% .9 of the time just to give you that little bit of wiggle space if you change something or you know add maybe you only have a b c but now you're adding a fourth shelf in there and so that's a whole you know you don't want to have to redo your whole pick sequence because you've added three new bins to a bay right and um, and again you know think about think about your users your order pickers walking down an aisle like I want, when I'm setting these up, my where when I I will set up warehouse sequences, even with alphabetized bins that on paper look really weird, but yep. the reason for it is when you start down that aisle, I want you going down it in a specific direction, and then I want left right left right left right left right left right left right because when you get to the end of that aisle, I want you to be done, and then you're gonna make the turn and come back up the next aisle. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. So it'll be it'll be an, almost in a reverse pattern. sequence. Yeah, S, an S yeah. pattern. And so most of the time, unless you've put a whole lot of thought into it, your bins are not going to alphabetize that way, especially if you start taking the third dimension of upper to lower yeah. and putting that into you it. You have to get real creative with your bin labeling if you try to do it by bin ID. And it gets very, like I've, I've seen it where, you know, this in is A1 and B1. But when we come around here, C1 and D1 are in the back, and it go. It, it just if you go by bin ID, it doesn't lay out naturally. I'm gonna throw this out there for for people that are watching this that have big 
warehouses with with high racking. Um, we worked with a customer one time where they have they were doing physical inventory at the end of every year. They had a three part bin ID. So it was like part one was the aisle. Part two was the vertical position. So 10 was on the floor, 20 was the next rack up, 30, 40, 50, 60. And then part three was the individual number of the bin. So it was, you know, X dash Y dash Z. For them, because they were doing physical inventory, this was like one of the coolest mods we ever wrote for somebody. We actually wrote a program for them that allowed them to create cycle counts specific to the vertical height in the warehouse so that you could create a cycle count that would only include bins that did not require the use of a forklift. Hmm. And what that allowed them to do was put people like on their lunch, you know, like on after their lunch break or whatever, like they could have CSRs come count for an hour that didn't need to be forklift certified. So they could create these very small dedicated counts, hand it off to them. They could go count for 30 minutes or an hour, then go back to their desk or whatever. It was, it was a really interesting idea. And, and it was a really fun project to do because I really felt like we were, we were developing this, this thing that, allowed them to actually get that physical inventory done. Um, yeah. That was the same customer that we came back for the next year and started doing the, hey, this was already counted by virtue of confirming that the bin was empty when they picked it. And that segues into this last field, which is max unique item, items allowed. So how many different items will be allowed to live in a bin at a given time? And for them, for a lot of their bins, it was one. Well, this says zero, so that means there's no unique item IDs. That, that means it's unlimited. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I, it's just one of those things I hate in P21 where, oh, if the setting's zero, that means everything. Well, no, that's not what a zero means. Yeah, right. Zero means zero. Um, yeah, I would say that's very specific. And, and it's going to be not even just specific to the company, but to an actual bin itself yeah um delete obviously you're not going to be able to delete if there's product in it um what is the new bin checkbox i think that auto checks when you start creating a new one i think oh i got you i'm not really sure what the purpose of that is but i think that's how it works um so yeah that's that's it Okay. Uh, I didn't cite anybody, yo. So, yo, hopefully uh, my breathing didn't come uh, off as a sigh. Well, not, now I'm self conscious and I'm thinking it might have been me. I don't know. I hope not. We're not sighing at you. We love you. We're glad you're no. here. Yep. Um, okay. Where to next, man? I'm trying to think if there's any. I mean, might as well cover. If you are going to use primary bins, let's show just, I mean, I, oh, I hope most people know where primary, yeah. Yeah. Um, Uh, location detail. There you go. Primary bin. And, and this is what we were talking about with the track bins, no bins put in there for when we were talking about, even if you're not using wireless handhelds to start off with. Um, it's interesting that no bin doesn't have a bin type. Uh. Yeah, it is interesting. I but I think it comes it's like pre configured. But if I change that bin then it, you know it 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 gets the type. But I think I, I don't think no bin has a type. I think it's already preset in the system when you get it, I think. Mm. Or when you enable bins or something. I I don't remember. Um uh, but yeah. That's no. 
this is where you would set the primary bin. Um, you know, again, I think when you get into larger scale warehousing operations, I, I, I'm going to go on a limb and say this becomes less of a thing because you're dealing with put away strategies and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I don't also don't need to be skewered on the internet by a bunch of angry warehouse managers with torches and pitchforks. So, yeah. Too late. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, we're done. I mean, we're done with the stream, right? <laughs> oh, if only that were true. Uh, Are we going to receive or pick first? Or put away? Uh, I say receive, put away, pick. Because okay, you can't follow pick the... something. Right. Because you can't oh. pick something if it hasn't been put away, and you can't put away something that hasn't been received. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm down with that. Again, just like we want to replicate physical things, uh, pretty much everything should start with a WWMS, um, which is nice. Um, I, I don't like... I have a love-hate with the way that this is set up where it's just more menu options in... in just regular P21. What I would recommend is people that are only logging into p21 using wireless guns to create a menu designer with the you know with only wireless warehouse functions in there um just makes less noise for them um uh, just my recommendation well we should probably talk about some of these administrative screens too uh like receipt session defaults you know, okay. again, this is like, I'm kind of surprised this isn't checked, but, um, but again, if you're, if you're getting craziness where like you're setting a setting and it's not, but my guess is if you never go to the screen or you never save anything here, it's just going to roll up to whatever location setting is. But if you have certain instances where you want certain users or certain guns, certain devices to uh, approve receipts automatically versus not, there is an RF receipt session default option there for you to use. Uh, I'm going to pin this right quick. Then you've got... Um, item query log login info that's just showing who you are and what your rf bin id is all of that good stuff and you'll notice right away when you're logging into all these that your even though it's p21 your bar is going to look different than your standard p21 correct functions um, yeah, your favorites list, your my menu for a WWMS session is separate and away from your non WWMS session. Um, back in the in the pre uh, web days, and I think this is probably still applicable. One thing that we would do um, was we we would have people and these were like i said larger scale operations but we would have people whose primary job it was on a day in day out basis was to record movement of inventory mm -hmm. and we actually found that the self-directed put away screen is the fastest way to transfer inventory between bins even it's even easier and faster than trying to do it through the bin adjustment screen and we mm -hmm. would have people with with uh, RF sessions on their desktop just so that they could do very fast put away. So something, yeah. something to think about. Um, okay. What else do we got here? We've got um, printer admin. Oh, well, that's going to get the views talking about printers. I'm sorry. Did I say printer? I didn't mean it. But uh, as Matt said, you've got some different options up there that become content context sensitive um and so you can display what your current printer is it should show up down here as well and then and i think that is actually set in user maintenance 
Or no, that's set on your session when you log in. Which one? I'm sorry. The your default printer for wireless. Yes, that is. But isn't there part. something in user maintenance still, or did they take it out and move it to? Or did they move it to user maintenance? It's not there anymore. So I'm guessing they moved it to the login session because I know when you log in, there's different options to identify your printer there. But there used to be a like a WWMS printer setting here too, but I think it's gone now. Uh, okay, moving on. Um, oh, well, shoot. I, I don't know if this is new or not. Sorry, I was just opening up uh, one of my P21s mm -hmm. and I was looking at the WMS settings. There is now a checkbox to limit session to WMS Windows only. So you don't have to create a menu designer. Oh, okay. Um, I did not know. I think that was a thing. I think the rest of this. Uh, there's a wide, our skinny receipt printer and wide receipt printer options. But I don't know if those are especially tied to WMS or not. I would imagine so, and I like that because it's very conceivable to use different sized labels for like receiving items versus yeah, so. um, item picks. Um, okay, I think we've we've pretty much covered all of that. So you said that we're going to go to PO receipts first, right? Well, PO receipts, and I also want to kind of spiral that into. Um, Cross referencing. Um, here, here's something that I don't like. Shocking. There's something I don't like. Um, I wish there was just a module for cross-referencing items. You can only get to it from PO receipts and... So you're talking like barcode learning? Barcode learning, yeah. Okay. There's not an actual... because The reason I say that because when you're first going into WMS, it's a big project to either you're going to have to build a good spreadsheet to import all that information in, or somebody's going to have to go <laughs> and start cross-referencing. And, and I've never liked the fact that it's, it's PO receipts and is it item inquiry or th there's another screen where there's two other screens and the version I was on, it was bugged. And then the other other screen you could do, I think was bin lookup or there was something weird, but anyways. Yeah. Um, well, so, you know, we just take one of these right from the top and we're going to go pull in now, ostensibly, you know, you're, there's a packing list affixed to the goods as they come in going to open that packing list and see oh okay i'm receiving this po number and if your vendor is really awesome and they print a barcode on you there you could just scan it you could just scan it uh i know there is a um is there a po pre-receiving report you could print out yes there is um let's uh, I, i'm not i'm not saying we have, i'm just no i think i think that's a good a good uh, thing to take a look at. Yeah, so you, I mean that that's that's the way to do it. Obviously, when you're getting items in, but if you're trying to take a warehouse that has, you know, twenty thousand SKUs already in it that isn't cross reference, it's going to take a long time, or it's going to slow down the pickers when that stuff's not cross referenced, and you're going to want all that stuff cross referenced before you actually turn it on. To go live at least yeah. in my opinion um so so with the barcode learning um i said you can learn the barcode from your vendors when you receive that yeah yeah and that's that is good if you're able to do that um yeah and the, the you know i i tend to agree the more you can preload that information from the front end that's great. But over time, you know, you'll have to learn let fewer and fewer and fewer. You right. won't hope. Unless you're and, constantly and, adding items. Well, and the good news is, since it's tied to a PO, it's tied to a vendor. Um, even So if you're only starting off with one location, the next location won't have that issue. Right. Because that UPC 
or their barcode, whatever it is, is already loaded in the supplier details. Um, so if you scan a barcode and it's not valid, it'll pop up and tell you it's not, or you can just go straight to barcode learning from there, mm -hmm. um, which we can just go through and receive it. And then we can come back and do barcode learning. Yeah. I've got a few different POs we can receive against. Okay. So I'm putting my item in and it's, you know, if I ha if I wanted to start with the line number, I could, and it would fill out more on the bottom. Or if what you're doing is scanning the item ID, which I think a lot of times is probably what's happening, then then that's how that's going to work. Um, and pay attention if you're using multiple units of measure; it's going to be in the UOM of the PO, I believe. Yeah. Um, something that keep that's not, has nothing to do with the p21 side but has to do with the rf session on whatever wireless device you're using there is certain settings that you need to do that when you scan something it attaches an inner to it yes because if not it's going to scan and stay in whatever bin you just or location you just scanned in yeah typically that's going to be on the the barcode scanner software on the device it, you're actually going to set up the device to say whenever i scan give me a interpress behind it so yep. that it will it, it will advance to the next field that's a great catch i haven't done that and in it, years and it's going to go to the next open field so for some reason if you didn't want people to be able to change you to measure from the PO if you had I believe if you protected that field it would just go to the next open field I believe right okay so uh, now it's it's prompting us for quantity so I'm gonna throw this out there for you guys to consider we did a study um, at the last place that I worked and again high volume operations and we found that there were a ton of mistakes being made by people fat fingering the quantity. Um, and we also found that when we looked at like once a pick ticket made it to the warehouse, right? What percentage of the time were we shorting it or overshipping it? And we found that we were shorting or overshipping less than 1% of the time. So 99% plus of the time, whatever the quantity to be shipped was, was the quantity actually shipped. So we created business rules to go ahead and default in the quantity. Now, again, this is business specific, but what we found was our mistakes went way down because we were eliminating a set of mistakes that, hey, I'm supposed to ship 50 and I'm actually shipping 50. If that's something that works for for you, just know that there that is an option. That's a fairly straightforward business rule to set the quantity to whatever is up here in the quantity remaining or on the picking side. I think we didn't do it on the receiving side. Actually, we didn't even use wireless receiving, but, um, but on the picking side, it was very helpful. Well, and if you figure that um, you probably could even tie it to specific vent, like if you know, since it's got a PO, it's obviously got a vendor or supplier yep. attached to it. If you know that this supplier is 99.9% .9 of the time since it's exactly what we order, I would rather have it default to the quantity and then the exception be... The user can change it. Yeah. The user can change it. I... Look, you know, again, we're talking about user experience and we're and and nothing none of it's going to be perfect. You're going to make mistakes no matter what. What you're trying to do is look at your data and make a determination as to what is going to work for you most of the time. Right. You know. Well, like I said, if if 99 times out of 100 they they send us the exact that's that's 99 times we have taken out fat fingers. Yeah. And, and there's that one fat finger potential now. Yeah. So we're, we're you know, so anyways. Uh, yeah. So again, you do, do what works for your business, but we're just mentioning these things as food for thought of, hey, these are things that can and have been done. Um, lots. So this is using system generated lot numbers. So it's going to go ahead and pre-assign the lot. Um, if you want to get into a conversation someday about, system gen versus adopting the manufacturer's lot number as your lot 
I've been through that conversation with customers multiple times. Um, it's, it's ended differently for different customers based on their needs. But if you're trying to make that decision or you're thinking about that, you know, I think by default, you would be implemented with system generated lot numbers and then be entering the traceable factor as an extended lot attribute. I despise that under most circumstances because it's just extra work. Lot attributes, and that was one thing I was going to bring up on the wireless. Lot attributes on here are a pain. Yeah. Like, especially if you, you know, I came from an industry where we had to record the mill number, we had to record the, you know, weight. There's all these different factors, the, the, the thickness, all these different, I think there was like four or five attributes we had to record for every lot. Trying to do that in here is a pain. Mm hmm um but we're gonna do a whole session on lots at some point yeah all right so back exit and back yeah the 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 action buttons they bit. take some some understand like it's not super clear no pun intended on, on what you should be uh, doing so expiration dates um that is going to be something that pops based upon how your system is set up so if you if you set up your system with expiration dates um and i think is that the allocation setting that really starts to drive that or is it the item i can't remember uh, i know we, we need to do a whole session on yeah um but it, it's it's really driven on the, it comes up as needed based on the item and we have dealt with customers that deal with with expiration dates um one thing that i thought was insane um when when i saw it implemented but i had to admit later that it, that it actually made a lot of sense was we had a customer that they just put a calculated expiration date on all of their perishable items um all their sealants and i was like why wouldn't you just use the manufacturer's expiration date he said because they we know when we receive it it's good for at least two years right so we're going to set the expiration date on all this stuff to 18 months number one to buy us time to get rid of it and right. then number two we're eliminating the need to enter that data yeah. And and I thought that made a lot of sense. Um, I like again, it was one of those where it was set up that way when we found it and I'm like, who would do this? And then as it became explained, I was like, okay, no, I can dig that. That makes sense to me. Um, I miss them. I do too. I'd I, I'd say I hope they're watching, but we know they're not. <laughs> uh, All right. So you so he's clicking next or you could hit enter, hit enter. and enter through. Yep um and now it's prompting me because we're using labels how many labels do you want to print and which label are you printing so i guess we probably need to circle back to labels at some point um, yeah that's gonna be all you i have no idea on any oh, of that. it's it's it, it once you get your head around it's not that bad okay so we're just not going to print any labels and now what bin are we putting it into um, which i find funny that we set up for our default Mm -hmm. been insist to be rec well, I, I think i so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna set it to rec mm -hmm. and we're gonna save and receive next because there is one more item on this mm -hmm. and we're gonna see if it defaults here or not well i think indy's question was going from ah, here's my one issue. receipt to to another issue i thought i think or one receipt or was it within the same? Uh, I think it was. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. And first off, Indy gets the award for like, like most eager watcher on the live stream. Like yeah. I logged in an hour ahead of time. Those <laughs> messages were already there. So that is very flattering. And thank you for that. Um, put in bin, deposit bin. Already have stock of the item being received. Interesting. Uh oh. Okay. Well, I know there was already stock of that and it still was set that way. So 
Okay. We're going to have to test this a couple of different ways. All right. So this time, I don't even know what the other line is. I just know it's line two. Quantity 25. Enter. Lot 23. Enter. And we're not going to print labels. Enter. You know, you should set that to zero. <laughs> what? What, what couldn't because in the settings you oh can yeah i know but there. i i may want to print labels at some point i i, I hate setting in these test systems i hate setting things to turn off so there's a deposit bin mm -hmm. so I'm maybe still... that's just a prompt to tell you hey this is where you've been going yeah so we do the confirmation and then save and approve right yes and that one's done. Okay. Um, so, okay. In that instance, we had... The item had a primary bin of A1. But the system is set up for put away algorithm only. So primary bin's not part of it. And we had a default receiving bin set on the location. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to try to set it to where we use primary bin, then put away strategy, see if that makes a difference. And if it doesn't, I'm going to try to sell some business rules. Uh, I also want to just say, I love that Indy has hung out for uh, 108 minutes yeah. just to get to their issue. <laughs> right. So we appreciate that. Even through the AI rant and everything. You know, I, I'll just say like, you know, we've been doing this YouTube stream now just for a few weeks. Uh, the YouTube channel we've been doing videos on for the past year or so. Um, it, it's just, it's nice when I, I hear from, I mean, I just talked to somebody brand new yesterday that, that found us because of our YouTube streams. Um, so the, if you're watching this later or you're watching it live, I just appreciate anybody that's. Oh, yeah. I mean. That, that's taking any kind of time, whatever, to watch any of this. Yeah, no, for sure. It's 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 very flattering, number one. And um, I, I really don't think this is going to make any difference here. Um, yeah, whatever. Um, but it, it, it's fun for us, and, we're, and we hope it's fun for you guys, too. Let's see. Let's log out. I really or we just or we just white noise in your background. That's, that's fine, fine too. too. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, and uh, whatever wireless device you're logging into, it will retain. Uh, that can, can you protect the fields on login? I don't. Can you? Not that I can't I've found do that. All right, so let's do uh, purchase order receipts again. Because that would be nice to be able to force it to keep that bin ID. But the fact that it preloads it, most people are just going to hit login. Mm -mm. yeah i'm very i feel like there's something else we're missing somewhere yeah if we don't figure this out um or if it turns out that there's nothing to figure out i think what i i would look at here is start looking at maybe some customization around what actually is your strategy for how you want a deposit bin because remember that's what this really is is a deposit bin um how you want that deposit bin suggested and i almost want to say when we did the big one with um the consolidation bins we actually had to go ahead and fill this in so that we knew it would be right for a given pick ticket um so okay next i'm guessing those default receiving bins are for 
not they're not wireless I'm, I'm thinking they're just tied to po receipts in p21 because those settings that you sat weren't on the wireless settings mm -hmm. they were just in the inventory tab i think in location maintenance yeah i don't like i said it'll suggest where where you've already deposited to but it's not it's going to make you fill it in every time i think the only other thing i can think of on this is and and i and is the issue that this is a behavior that you find is different between wireless and let's say the way that it works if you're receiving on the the regular web client or the desktop where if you've got a primary bin and you go to do a PO receipt it's preloading the primary bin if that's the delta that you're saying hey it works this way over here but not over here then i can kind of understand that because again the whole impetus on wireless warehouse is that you're scanning your way through right so i could see it being that way on purpose yeah okay i think i think that's the key is that when you're when you're doing this in wireless, the expectation is that you're going to scan your way through it. Now, again, we're, we're going to play with this a little bit more to try to, to sort through that. I'm looking through, just make sure there wasn't any, I'm not seeing anything that would. Uh, well, okay. So while you're looking at that, Matt, I'll, I'm going to do a sidebar on you know, to be or not to be where wireless receiving is concerned. Okay. Um, my opinion, one of the best things about the web client, uh, about the existence of the web client, you know, whether you like it or not, that's, that is what it is. But once P21 went to a web-based platform, you have an opportunity to bring technology closer to the point of use. Um, in the last place that I worked where we, we had distribution centers and stuff like that, we never actually implemented wireless receiving. Um, there were just things about it that we didn't feel were going to work for us. So what we ended up moving toward was a receiving cart where you had like a large tablet clamped to this cart um, or even a laptop or whatever with an extended life battery, whatever. And you could roll that through the receiving floor. Um, it even had a, a Bluetooth uh, barcode reader, so you could still do barcodes, but you are actually receiving using the normal receiving window. Um, and and again, it, it kind of gave you a way to get the best of both worlds, right? So like if you're really into this concept that you want that receiving bin to default a certain way, or if you literally are going to put the stuff up as you receive it, consider the idea of, well, I want to receive, consider the idea of mobile receiving versus the word wireless receiving because wireless receiving has this connotation that you're going to use the WWMS screens. You're not really bound by that. You can change up the device a little bit and create a very viable desktop receiving experience on a mobile platform with this system. And I, I just think it's something that's worth thinking about and seeing if maybe that's a better fit for your business. For sales order picking, I think it's a no-brainer. Um, for other transactions, I think it's mix and match. You know, you've got to find what's going to work in your organization. But but we have found a lot of instances where it's like, gosh, we, we really want to be able to do wireless receiving, but we really want the receiving experience to be just like it is 
on the desktop. And this was a really kind of nice meet in the middle solution where you get to have the best of both worlds. So, yeah, I mean, or, or like you said, some kind of, cause we can do, we and other, uh, people can do business rules. There's other consultants. I wasn't aware. No, no. I just meant like Epicor people. There's definitely no other consultants. Oh, okay. Cool. I was, uh, I, so you were really, making me nervous. So it's really just us. It's okay. really just us. Cool. Um, but again, I think it, it ties back to you. If a part of wireless doesn't work for your 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 way of doing business, doesn't mean you have that's you're, you're just sol. Um, there's there's ways to, and I'm not going to say work around. There's ways to uh, adjust your process to use a mix or some customizations. Yeah, I mean, like we, we've worked with uh, facilities where everything comes in on the receiving floor. It's all checked in off the packing list. That's handed off to the receiving manager who double checks it and then just receives it in on the desktop or the, the full web client at their workstation you know, over by the dock door or wherever. Yeah, and mean, then they use wireless guns to do the put away. Right. Cause I mean, if it's a 200 line PO and they're like, yep, yeah, we count it all. And they just click receive all. It's done. It's done. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I, I dug through all the, there, there's nothing that's pertaining to, I think it's just the way it is. Like, I, I think it goes back to, it doesn't default quantities. It doesn't default, um, anything because the point is you're supposed to scan it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I could see that. Um, and, and again, if you're like the method I talked about using the cones with with barcodes on them, you know you're going to be scanning those. But if you only have one receiving location, I can see that being frustrating. That you're going to just have to have these REC barcodes everywhere, or somebody's going to type in REC. Well, I you know. I find it interesting that you brought up the cones on the receiving side. Um, I have seen the cones used on the outbound side. Yeah, yeah. Where when the material's deposited, a cone is set on it, and the only two people authorized, or the only two types of people authorized to remove that cone are quality assurance and the warehouse manager themselves. Yeah, and that's that's that was their visual cue to make sure that this material has been checked on the way out. And we actually, um, for the company Danny used to work for, mm -hmm. we actually wrote a QA extension to Wireless Warehouse, where I, we just put a button on screen and it, and it blew out this other module. And th what this module, so what would happen is you would deposit to a QA bin. And then what would happen is the QA people would come by and they would just like, I think we put it on transfer picking or something. There was a button that said open QA and they would click that button. A new interface would come up. They would scan the pick ticket, which was laying on top of the pallet. And it would bring up all the material in QA. And then they would go through and basically do, it wasn't as complex as doing a pick. But mm -hmm. they could go in and validate, yes, this line is good. Yes, this is good. Yes, this is good. And when they hit complete, it would then bin transfer all that material to the shipping bin. Um, that was a that was a really cool add-on, too. Um, I enjoyed doing that one. Uh, I'm going to advocate a, a break? five-minute break. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm in. Yeah, we're at two hours exactly. Fantastic. Guys, yeah. we will be back in five minutes.
There's no music on the stream. It must be super low. And it looks like it kind of is. Let me try to bring it up just a touch. Whew. I literally sat down with like nine seconds to go. Hang on, get my bearings. So that's doing, but had different quantities. So I can't even read it. I gotta put my glasses on. It's got, I did a test on receiving a single item that had multiple quantities. Uh, but I only received as a partial. And then that okay, would kind that, of make that sense. makes sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. Because, it, you know, as you're unloading, you may scan, you know, a case. And then you're you're still unloading, and you find another case. I can yep. see that, bucket, but I don't think it's going to carry over from one transaction to the next. Yeah, no, that I think that I could see that as you're trying to complete out um, the yeah. same line for sure. I, I took my drink, my my cup now, and I didn't put more drink in it. I was too concerned with grabbing a cookie, so I have a little bit left. To make that last this session of the live stream sponsored by LaCroix not really I wish all right you'll know we've sold out when we start repping like AG1 and <laughs> what are some of the other ones is AG1 um you did separate transactions but it's the same PO with the same lot right right Now, in your first transaction, did you do it as an approved receipt? Or did you leave it as unapproved and then go back and start receiving more of that line? Yes. Okay. Again, I, I, it seems to me like the key here is that it, it remembers based on the PO line number. Yeah. I think. I mean, we could prove that pretty quick. Could we? Or was, that a, was that a subtle hint? It felt like a subtle hint. You know... Something like that. How many POs did you actually create? Because we probably need like 40. I, I kind of went light on PO, POs. I'm not going to lie. Like we have two left. So whatever oh, we're going to do, you better make we're it We're done. <laughs> Can't make any more. Okay. Line one. Oh, no. Oh. Quantity. This has. Been, okay. Here we go. This one's a partial. Because there's four remaining. All right. So let's see what happens. We put in one. I don't, not 10, one. Okay. See that time it also defaulted the same lot number. Right. That it's I had before. That line. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Mm. oh. <laughs> Can't see your screen. Well, you just have to imagine it. Uh, but I will say this though. The put away bin did not, uh, fault for us no it did not <laughs> are we sure that we we're, we're like a disaster man are, are you sure that we received that one on this on, on wireless no but i left enough quantity where we can try it again okay wait no no you gotta like i'm done now yeah you're supposed to approve it Exit and back. Wow, that was the ultimate exit and back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it means what you think it means. <laughs> oh, that's one of my favorite movies. Oh, it's amazing. I remember when I first moved, moved we had out of this... my house. Oh, go ahead. Go, you do yours I, first. I, I first moved out of my house at a, at a high school. Uh, and we, I, we didn't have cable. It was me and my buddy. We, we couldn't afford cable. So I had a, a old TV that had a VCR attached to it. Remember when they used to do that back in the day? Mm -hmm. And I had like three movies. I had Jurassic Park, Princess Bride, and I don't remember what the third one was. And I would just watch them. That's all I had in my room. So I would just watch them on repeat. That's amazing. Um, That's before streaming, folks. That was streaming back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> We had this customer 
really large deployment. We spent a lot of time with them and then they got bought out and they're not even on P21 anymore. Um, but we love them dearly and we really miss them a lot. Matt was talking about them earlier. And, and fortunately, you know, you spend enough time around people and y'all become friends and, you know, it's like we all work for the same company almost. <clears throat> And their favorite thing was there on their Trello board, their, their list of, they, they had a column called top priority, right? Which to me is, is, is that's a singular thing, right? You're allowed to have <laughs> one thing. It's a top priority. And there would be like 20 cards in the top priority. And, and I finally just did it one day on a meeting. I'm like, you know, you guys keep saying top priority, but I do not think it means what you think it means. <laughs> And they Man. knew exactly what we meant and just found it incredibly funny. And, and then also, added uh, five more things to top priority. Well, they, they started adding shades of red <laughs> yeah. to determine the, the priority. Don't, yeah, we ended up with double secret top priority there for yeah. a while. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's all, all I'm getting is a suggestion. It's not actually doing it. I am, I have to assume. Um, Indy, do you have a default? PO receipts been set in location maintenance. That could be a Delta because we have one set. Not that it's doing anything. Well, receive and then put save and approve this time or put the receive in. I did that before. No, before you just click next because there was still more on the Well, PO. but I did another one during, during your story Oh. and it was the same. I think we have enough to do one more receipt on it. Yeah. Yeah. See, it's it's picking up the lot. All right, they said, no, that's what... No, I'm seeing it's in the deposit bin. Not... Disregard the numbers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's just not... It's just not doing it. They're saying, no, that's what I'm seeing. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, so it's telling you the deposit bin, but it's so not. It's not actually doing it. Okay. Well, okay. We know people that could make that happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay. So anything else on receipts that you want to talk about? Uh, barcode learning? Or do you want to do I hope this? you know something about it. Yes, I do. Excellent. Um, do we not have a PO? We we might have one. Whew. Does it have open quantity? All right. We'll find out. Twenty nine. Yes. Okay. okay, we got we so, have twenty nine more opportunities. Um. So actually, there, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. You can just go straight to barcode learning. But I want what I want you to try to do is your can that you have there mm -hmm. can you type in the upc code on there in that that field for me without spilling it on my keyboard <laughs> <laughs> preferably he's, he's, this is the kind right. of abuse that i take on a daily basis all here right. all right so what, what we're simulating here is him up oh, oh, oh i right did that there. on purpose yeah okay um yeah, there we go. So he's going to just start typing in the full 12 digits of the UPC. Oh, it's not. It should populate. Do I have to have that turned on? That's interesting. I look before we like jump off the high dive. Uh, maybe you just have to go straight to. I could swear that it would populate when you scanned it. I, okay, well, you you are probably correct, and it is probably either a location or a system setting that we don't have turned on. So I know how to I, I know how to do it when you just you know type it in, or you click the barcode. The only menu option there's a learn barcodes report. So there's no settings or anything that way, which is a very detailed criteria date range. <laughs> uh, see, I 
swear when you would you know you know what it is when you scan it it tells you it's invalid item id and then you're then you're supposed to click the barcode learning okay appreciate the little gaslight action there <clears throat> all right so barcode learning oh yeah, well that's... at least it has the decency to yeah so that, that's what it is so you, you're still supposed to put that code in first scan and it retains it that's what it is it retains it straight to the barcode learning but then i have to, to put the item id in right which i think if you just double i mean it's just an item lookup so you're gonna have to know what the item is oh, oh actually, no, it knocks PL it down line. to the po line okay. okay all right i was about to say that was about to make me feel a little pukey <laughs> but that's better all right so save uh now don't you and you're clicking uh, there's absolutely no reason to say yes to this unless, um, and, and we can get this to show this, um, if you scanned a different barcode or if it was not a actual formatted UPC one, it would tell you there's a UPC already assigned. Do you want to save this new code as a alternate code? Why you would ever say, like to me, this is something I would have made automatically always say no, but I guess you can't because it's tied to other stuff too. But. So you want to say no, because if not, you're going to have the, um, now if you retype in that number, it'll pull the item ID. Well, we'll, we'll do it this way. We'll, we'll go ahead and complete this receipt out. Yeah. You should have copied that. Uh, uh, oh no, it was much more fun to balance it over my keyboard or we could just go show well no because you'll need the 12 digit so just so and we mentioned this on, on uh actually i think we mentioned it on a call or on a video that is no longer around because it died um <laughs> uh, the if you're importing upc codes or manually typing them in um do not put in the 12th character um P21 has the the calculation to figure out what the check digit is. Now, obviously, he's entering the full Ta -da. 12 digits because that's what he's scanning. Um, All right. Well, if we saved it as the UPC, let's go look at it in item maintenance. Yeah. And see yeah, what it did. It should be missing the last character on your can, which I think is the three. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you try to enter in all 12, it'll error out and say that's not a valid because it's trying to do a check digit. And the check digit, I believe, is actually stored in a different... Oh, and just, just for the folks at home. <laughs> just type it in. It does. I mean, it reads it and flips it. Yep. So if we go over here to supplier... Oh, that's the wrong supplier. No, it was right. Was it? There it is. And the three is, in fact, missing. Now, there is... Um, it's in the database. I don't I don't remember. I, I imagine it's INV mass. There's actual a field for check digit, I believe. Um, we might have... We, or we actually might have built a custom one that did the calculation. Mm -hmm. Either way. Um, Back to real receipts. Back to so. Okay, so so that worked. It, it flipped it right over, no problem. We're still staying yep. in the same lot. And, you know, we're still getting the same. So, I look, I mean, to me, a very simple, sensible business rule is if there is something in the suggested yeah. deposit bin, go ahead and put it in the put-in bin field. I like that for sure. Okay. So we did barcode learning. Um, what else? If there's notes, you can click view notes to see them. And that's item notes or no, is it PO notes? I believe this is going to be PO notes and PO line notes, I think. Um, let's talk about that deposit button. <laughs> Why is... Don't know. Did you just click it and it? I did, and it just took me to the lot. And I don't understand where it got its quantity from. Burn it with fire. Let's try. Let's start over. 
You know why? It's probably... No, I have no idea why it's doing that. I'm just gonna click it again. Okay, no, you gotta have the item ID. See, now... I don't even remember what item it was. Well, this is a different PO number, isn't it? Hey, look, same one. Should we talk about wrong part? We might, as, like, we might as well. We're getting low on content for this screen. <laughs> Which I have a... Like, I don't understand the purpose of that. Like, if I scanned an item that's not on the PO, it wouldn't... Hold on. Would you have to set that to yes first? and Because if you try to put a part number that's not, try to put a part number that you know is not on that PO. What's the, like how, <laughs> I'm very confused on the purpose of that, that flag. Mm -mm. Well, let's go look at the receipt. Because if I scanned it, Well, okay, let me do this, because what we didn't do was a save and approve on that. Man, it sure would be nice to have a business rule there. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. I think that, that would be... I have no idea. I'm going to have to go back to PO receipts and see. That just seems like a very arbitrary, doesn't do anything. A... How do you know it's the wrong item? If it is the wrong item. I don't want the report. I want... Yeah. Purchase order receipts. listening to see if we were louder than the music mm -hmm. so i was waiting for you to talk and you made that noise and then i heard that noise like two seconds later <laughs> uh, yeah i don't know that didn't seem to do a, anything well that's not even the right po anyway oh you know what I bet you it was just re continually receiving into the same receipt. Okay, let's try this one. Nothing there. I don't. I don't understand the purpose of that. I, I've never used it. But I thought we'd bring it up since it was staring us in the face. Well, thanks for that. Uh, let's see. I don't think, oh, that, no, I don't think that's, that's not what I wanted to do. You were typing in the reference. Number. I was. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand. Receipt issues? Did you check there? No, I did. To the right. Yeah, I did. You did. And there okay. wasn't anything there. Yeah, just don't use that. <laughs> Does it hurt when you touch it? Well, then don't touch it. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand what that's even. Yeah, I hey, maybe Indy. Maybe Indy knows. Yeah. <laughs> Indy, Indy do you know? save us. <laughs> You're our only hope. All right. Um, <laughs> I mean, receiving. My only big con issue with receiving is the same issue I have with most screens in wireless mm -hmm. is the action bars. I find it unintuitive. I don't know 
like if you hit enter too much you're gonna go back not a lot i just I, i'm not a big fan of of how their keys work but that's just but there's no changing that we, we can't manipulate those keys or actions all right well let's let's move to put away then and we're going to start with self-directed put away because that okay. one's kind of like the easiest now okay pro tip for anyone who's trying to like receive to primary bins and doesn't necessarily want to go through all the setup or deal with put away algorithms or whatever um, change your receiving label if you're using receiving labels to print the primary bin on the receiving label and then you can use self-directed put away and you know where you're supposed to go um, that is a one way to do it another way to do it is let's say that you set up ABC classes for put away and you have you know class P1 those are your highest moving items that should be received to the quick pick area. Then put the put away um, class on the receiving label. Have that printed on there. Um, because then that's another visual cue. Anything you can do to give your people visual cues that, hey, this is what you're supposed to do. Do that. We've worked with people that they change the color of the receiving label every year. And the reason that they do that is so at a glance, they can see how long that inventory has been sitting there because they know, oh, red was three years ago or whatever. If that works for you, hey, there's nothing wrong with doing stuff like that. Um, Man, three years. It's <laughs> a long time I, for inventory I, to be sitting there. I was being extremely generous. Wow. <laughs> um, anyway, um, so, all right. You're going to scan your bin. Then you're going to scan your item, or in our case, we can look them up. So we have these three items that are in our, our rec bin. And then it's what lot are you picking up? This is a lot tracked item. Oh, well, again, you're not doing lots. Yeah, you won't have to deal with that part of it. Now, how many of the 10 are we moving? Are we moving them all or not? And then where are we putting them? Now, you'll you'll notice the checkbox for change to primary was not checked. Was not there. Mm -hmm. And because geniusly, instead of just letting you check the box, you have to click the set make primary bin. Oh, really? Yeah, it's something like that. But there's a button at the top. Oh. Okay. So let's take this one. Now, see, that time the lot defaulted because there's, there's only, only one. one lot. And we'll move all 20. So click the set bin. There you go. Now, when you save this, it'll set whatever you're making that as the primary bin. That's pretty cool. Yeah, but to me, it's it's not intuitive because to me, I would put a bin ID in first. But if you put the bin ID and hit enter, you're done. Look, to me, I, I, I'm not even like in most instances, I don't. The person probably receive, putting it away probably shouldn't no be idea. making that decision. Right. In most cases. Now, I, I know there's going to be exceptions to that, but I don't know. I, I, I just, I don't, I, I don't like being able to do administrative things from a transactional screen, I guess is my issue there. You know, I just think that things can really get messed up that way. Um, so that's self-directed, right? You need to know where you're picking it up and, and where you're going to put it away to. Now, 
Um, before we go to system directed, which I don't, we don't have a put away strategy set up. We could maybe mess around and try to create one. But let's do group put away. Have you ever messed with that one? No, no, we never, we never got down to that path. Okay. Be very, very careful here. Um, I have seen where somebody goes to group put away and they try to pick up the entire bin. So we're just going to do that. And it picked up four items. All right, well, that's, that's not the end of the world, right? That's pretty handy. I have seen people, because the, the wreck bin was a disaster, try to pick up a thousand items. <laughs> it had the net effect of just crashing their entire WWMS system. And um, what you had was a bunch of parts that were in limbo uh, because the client ran out of memory before it could pick up all the items. And so we had to spend quite a bit of time in the middle of a, of a work day trying to recreate records to make this happen. So if, if you're going to do that, you need to be really, really, really careful with it. Having said that, if your bin's clean and you know it's clean, great. You've got a what's yeah. left button and it's going to tell you, hey, I've got these items and this is where I'm suggesting they be put, probably because that's the primary uh, the primary bin and we have primary slash put away algorithm selected here. Um, and so once you start this process of doing the put away, um, you know, the, the idea being you've got a bunch of stuff on a pallet and you're just run, or in a cart and you're running it around the warehouse to put it away. And so you're going to do a confirmation scan on that item and confirm the lot number. And then how many of them are you putting up? And you can also tell, you know, it's telling you, okay, we're suggesting you put it in no bin, but you can change that. And you can also set the primary from there as much as I'm not like super thrilled about it. Um, you can also ask it to suggest an empty bin. Oh, this is it right here. Okay. When I said suggest an empty bin and it's asking mm -hmm. me why, if you say bin is damaged, which if you happen to notice is the default that is selected, it will pick lock that bin. Ew. So if you're getting bins that are inexplicably pick locked, that is probably why. Um... But, you know, group put away is, is it's pretty nice. I, I like it. it. It works well. Um, you know, you have a lot of different options here to, to put stuff up. And you basically are just going through it until you and you can deposit all items in the same place and, and all of that. So so it's nice for that. OK, let's talk. Um, Put away strategy, which I have not messed with in forever. I don't think we ever got that fancy. Most don't. I want to say. Yeah, so put away attributes. We're just going to do this. So this is, you know, when when you can set what the put away attribute for something is, this this is how you develop that list of put away attributes. Um, I got to remember how to do this. It has been forever and a day. Is it? I am, I am not much help on that. Yeah.
so I, it basically gets into this idea of saying, okay, you know, based on these attributes that I'm giving it, I want, um, I want my put away strategy when something meets these attributes to go into these assigned zones. So you can basically, you can associate put away zones with attributes of the item, whether it's the rank or the packaging type or the put away attribute or, or whatever. Again, I, I, I'm kind of fumbling here a little bit because I have used this on a very limited basis, but that's the general idea. So once you have that set up, then if when you're trying to figure out like how something's going to be put up or whatever, you can go over here to this put away trace. When you tell it, this is the item, this is the quantity. And, you know, you can set all these different kind of logging levels. Tell it to suggest bins. And it's going to then say, okay, here are all of the bins that I'm going to suggest for where you're going to put this item and then how it came to that decision. So in this case, it's going to be going into A1 because that's the primary bin. And it has available weight because the weight's unlimited and, and all of that stuff. So if, if this one were full, it may then go to another bin and say, well, I'm telling you to put it here because of your quick pick rule or because it has the quick pick attribute or because of this or because of that. So I, I know this is kind of a, a not a great overview of, of how to set up um, put away strategies, but it's, it's kind of the idea. So it's, and then here, when you look at, you can look at all the different bins and, and see what's in them and, and whatnot. Um, you can look at the trace messages, which if you're doing a lot of this and, and start to get comfortable with reading how this works, it's, it's looking and saying, okay, this wasn't a group put away. It's this item. Here's the quantity. Let's go get the information wait, wait, and then, you know, you just keep going through here and it's essentially walking you through its logic of saying, okay, well, I don't have a matching put away zone list. I don't have uh, an empty bin strategy list. I don't have a this, I don't have a that. So we're going to go with primary bin because that's how it's supposed to be done. So the point being, you're going to use your put away list maintenance to kind of define the criteria of saying these items are going into these put away zones. And then as you're trying to test that and make sure it's doing what you want it to do, you would use the put away trace as an inquiry method to say, okay, here's a scenario that I'm going to throw at you. Show me what you're going to suggest as far as where this can go. And then it's going to tell you that and tell you based on that, um, why it's coming to that conclusion. So if we then go to, um, I'm gonna do a quick bin adjustment here, or actually I can just do another self-directed. So let's go to A1 and let's move B and D, oh, oh, one, nine, one, two, two, zero. And we're gonna move a hundred and we're gonna move these back to rec. Let me just make sure they're in there. Yep, they're there, okay. All right, now if we go to system directed put away, we go to rec and that's the only item that's in rec, so it's gonna default all that. Okay, see, it's suggesting bin A1. And it's doing that because in the put away strategy, we have it set to Primary bin first, then put away algorithm. Now, if our mm -hmm. primary bin was full, it would then kick us out to whatever the next bin in the strategy is. Um, you could also tell it, hey, give me a different suggestion. And again, 
if you do that and you select bin as damage, which is defaulted, it's going to pick lock the bin. I mean, we can even test that right quick. See if it still does that. So bin is damaged. And now it's saying suggest. This is amazing to me. When P21 can't figure it out, it just says, eh, put it wherever you want. It's fine. <laughs> so uh, I'm actually just going to leave it in rec. Now I'm just interested to see if this is still an issue because I haven't really looked at this in years. Uh, location. Bin. Oh, it's not pick locked. Well, that's good. Maybe they fixed that. Okay, well, I stand corrected. Or maybe it was something else. But at least it's not pick locked. Whoops, I don't want to put lock it either. Okay, so that gets us through put away. And I guess next we're walking through sales order picking. Yeah. Let me close some of this stuff up. A lot of stuff. All right. I do have a lot of pick tickets. I made sure there were like 10. Good. All right. All right, so here we go. Next. All right, so it's basically what you expect. You're gonna start by saying, here's where I am. You're supposed to be in A3. Are you actually in A3? So if we don't say that we're in A3, it's gonna give us an invalid bin ID. So we'll confirm that we're in A3. Now we have to do that confirmation scan on the item. Yikes. Me and you. you have to type in the correct item or scan the correct item. That helps. And then same with the lot. We're doing the confirmation scan on the lot because this is a lot tracked item. And what's the quantity we're supposed to pick? Now this is where I was talking about the pick quantity was set to one, and this is where I was talking about earlier of setting up a business rule that just says, look, whatever's here, just make that the default quantity here because it's way too easy to do that. Especially when you're talking about somebody trying to key it in on a, on a wireless device. You know, to me, that's sketchy because oftentimes the quantity is not barcoded or it's break bulk and it doesn't matter. You're not taking the quantity that's off the label. Um, before you hit anything, I'm going to complain <laughs> Please. about the actions. So you can see in sales order picking, there's like 500 of them. Okay. Which when you're on a device that's this big. Are, are, are you um, insinuating that it's difficult? Yeah, it, it's not intuitive and it, it's just kind of... All There's right. a lot of stuff in here most people aren't going to need or, I don't know, I, I just feel like it's so much stuff. Well, I'm going to try one more thing here. I'm going to do oh, a you pick. You can barcode loan on Oh, on there picking. we go. Pick exception. Uh. If you hit pick exception and your user answers yes to lock the bin... Then it locks the bin. Now, I, I, I want you guys to imagine that um, this is just somebody trying to get through their day and, and pick something. And all they were trying to do was just say, hey, look, I just need to I, I just need to get to this. And so I'm going to do a pick exception. And they're just they're just trying to get through their day. 
And all they did was answer yes to that question. Everyone else, until you unlock that bin. What? It was supposed to lock the bin. Maybe it was I had A3. To... Oh, was it A3? Okay. Thank you. There. Now that, that bin is now pick locked. No one can pick from it. You can put stuff into it, though. All day long. <laughs> you just won't be able to pick it out once you put it in there. So a nice portal or report studio thing for you, if you're running a warehouse that's on wireless, show me a list of pick lock bins <laughs> just just because um, that might be a problem. Maybe an alert when somebody locks a bin. Also a good one. Um, all right. So A1. Now, I will say this. Did it, so it let you, because you locked that bin, it let you come back to pick a different bin? Well, so it asked me if I wanted to use pick any, okay? Um, and that's another feature that's up here. So you can go up here and do a pick any, and it's going to show you everywhere that this lives. Um, I have seen this feature get abused to death. Because here's what happens, especially if you're dealing with small parts. Fasteners comes to mind. If you're supposed to pick 10 and there's 10 on hand in the bin, like in fasteners, notoriously, there's going to be like eight or nine, right? So what typically happens is people get sick of that happening to them very quickly. And when they see that they're supposed to pick a small quantity like that and that there's that many in the bin, they immediately go to pick any and they select the biggest number from here. Because they know that it'll be there. Yeah. And so, so what you end up with is an extremely highly fragmented inventory. And not only that, not only can they pick any bin, in this instance with lot control, they can pick a different lot. And so when people start picking around small lots, you're gonna end up in a scenario very quickly where your overall on hand quantity of that item is a thousand and it's in a hundred different lots of 10. <laughs> I'm not even well, joking. Well, I talk about the, I mean, luckily all of our bins are in A, but what if the one they wanted was in D? So they're gonna walk over there? Well, what happens it. is if, if you put it, if you do pick any on D, it just then skips that pick and it comes back up in warehouse sequence. Okay, so it does fix yeah. itself. What? Okay. <laughs> fix itself. Relatively speaking. So, so y'all, you know, be really conscientious and careful about how often pick any is getting used, um, especially if you have people that are kind of like using it all the time as a crutch. There is a way to ferret it out. Um, you can run reports or build queries that look at negative allocations. I think I think what you're looking for is a is a transaction that does a negative allocation. And there's a couple of other attributes that go with that, but but it basically says, hey, this person's picking around that lot. Um, seen it happen. It's not great. Um, I mean, pick any is good, but, you know, it's good for what it's good for. So our pick any bin here, we'll go back to A3. Eh, A2? I don't know. what. Great. Okay, there we go. We'll stick with A1. All right, so confirmation scan, B and D. 418-00, lot 12, quantity one. Okay, now the label ID is the ship item label. So this is like, it's, it's a different label. This one has more transactional relevant information on it. Like order number is available. Uh, you can dyna change in, or dyna change, you can data stream in like customer name, their PO number. This is a label that you would print and affix to whatever you're shipping out to your customer to say, hey, this is what this is. I like this label a lot, especially when it's done well. You can give your customer a lot of relevant information really easily. But is it, so it's per item? Yeah, it's, it's, every, it's per pick. So if I pick 100, 
this time and then I come back and pick a hundred more, you can just keep doing that. Is there a, cause I never got to this point of this. Is there a actual packing slip label for lack of a better word? As far as a label of here's all the different things in the shipment. Yeah. I think so. I need to go back and look at the labels to be sure. Um, but I was just wondering. Yeah. All right, so we're going to zero on that. And, okay, what bin are we going to put it in? So, like, at this point, typically, your process would be to put it in a shipping bin, you know, what, or an what, outbound bin. What bin did it try to? Oh, I think that was an error message left over from oh. earlier. Um, so, we're going to do that, and that's it easy see i feel like the oh because you can't pick multiple lines I remember that and deposit them all into one bin instead of having to yes and so once you're done picking them you click deposit all instead of deposit yep. it'll put them all in a single bin so let's see Oh, we should talk about workbench too. We are. Oh, that's that's next. So I just wanted to pull this report. Oh, there's nothing in here. Um, this wireless device audit report. If you're a warehouse manager, you really should look at running this um, at least once a week. But this is going to show you, and you you would want to do it after like kind of at close of business or at beginning of business. Um, because what this is going to show you is RF bins that have items in them. When the, when the work day is over that this report should look like this, it should be empty. There shouldn't be items left in RF bins. So this gives you the ability to know, oh, Hey, this is stuck in somebody's wireless device. Um, you said we want to talk workbench. Mm-hmm. I like Workbench. I'm going to bring up two screens. Okay. So this is the main Workbench screen. Um, and I don't know if I have one in here already. Nope. Good. And you can use this so we can just say like default. Uh, bench let's say sales orders and it's gonna be a location 10 at the moment you know it's 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 inactive you actually have to set the bench to active to get it to do stuff you have this query ID which is not required but we're gonna come back to it you can decide whether or not you're gonna create groups for group picking here whether or not you're gonna auto assign transactions eh. I guess if, if, if your picks are all pretty homogenous and anyone can pick anything, that's probably pretty okay. So as pick tickets get created, they're going to be automatically assigned to a user. I kind of like that. I kind of don't like it. But if you set it, you can also say, hey, nobody's device can have more than three orders in it at a time or better still can't have more than, say, 20 lines. Um, so that's, that's what that does. We're not going to auto assign. And we can go over here and set this to active. Yes, I want to save. Oh, I actually have to put an ID in. Yay, one of these ones where... Hey, it didn't wipe oh, it out. Well, but it's one of those things where sometimes you're supposed to give it the ID. Okay. And sometimes P21 gives it the ID. Right. So if you notice the error message I got there was, hey, you can't really do anything with this until you set up a query. Okay. So what you want to do, let's say low 10 sales. Wow. All right. And then I'm not really going to mess with the extended description. All right. So this is how 
you can set up different workbenches to meet certain criteria for your business. So you can say, look, this workbench, we are only going to concern ourselves with shipping orders. So like if you have a group of, of users that their responsibility is only to ship orders, and then you have a, a, a user or group of users that their responsibility is only to ship transfers, you can separate this into different workbenches so that only transfers go into that one so that only transfers end up in the users who should have transfers. Um, and so you can see how you can do that uh, just by selecting out the types of transactions. You can also like set up, like if you have a, a, a dominant customer, right? Or you have, you know, hey, these three pickers only pick for this customer because they're so big. You can even work your workbenches down to customer level, ship to levels, whatever. Um, pick, to, pick ticket number is a strange one. Yeah, it is. Um, I, I'm not really sure what the purpose of that one is per se. Um, but, you know, you could set print dates, required dates, carriers, yeah. routes. I mean, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of flexibility, packing basis, number of lines that has it has to meet before it'll go onto the bench. Will call is a useful one mm -hmm. if you're using... Order priority is another good one. Um, there's a lot here to digest. There's 24 items. I think it's just showing me all the different oh, rows. The, yeah. All the, the query lines. Okay. Yeah. And then you've got same thing for transfers. You can set up bin replenishments. You can set up uh, production orders and you can set up secondary process all kind of the same way. But obviously, the flags up there would have to be right. Like production I'm surprised orders, those tabs didn't like deactivate when you want to check that. That's interesting. I'm surprised that you're surprised. <laughs> can we preview our query? We can. Oh yeah. So it's going to show you, hey, this is what's going to, like, if you ran this right now, this is what's going to go on the bench. That's pretty cool. Yeah. All right, so we save this query, and now that query gets assigned to the workbench. I'm gonna save that query. Mm -hmm. Didn't you just say yes? I thought so. All right, so we're gonna come in here, activate this. Okay, so here we go. Here's our, we have five tickets totaling six lines that are not assigned. Um, let me make sure, okay. Do you have to create the Oh, there it is. Yeah. So here you can add users into this workbench. So if I go in here, we're going to add in admin. Okay. So you can see as I'm changing who my user is, I'm getting different results, right? So what you do is you say, okay, we're going to take this order and drop it into admin's bin. Thought. You dropped it into this. There you go. Uh. All right. Hang on. Again, bear with me. It's been a hot minute. Reassign. Uh, what do you mean no records have been selected? This is not the way I remember this working in the desktop. Yeah, gosh. My mouse I think that drag, drag is only up and down. 
It's not even doing that. There you go. Oh, oh no, that just re. No, that just. Yeah. Yeah, I see, but you used to. Whatever. I wonder. Like, it should see me as being on. Let me. Scan and refresh. Okay. I am not amused because this is like legit how it worked in the desktop. Reassign. Why is it saying no records have been selected? There's not even a way to select it unless. Okay, let's try that. Uh, there ah. You go. Oh, that's assigning out to another workbench. Oh. I don't like that at all. Oh, that's bizarre. Okay, so see, to... it did work, but I had to select two of them. Okay, so when it turns dark blue, you can move it. So, because you, you were just clicking and dragging, you weren't clicking on it, then dragging. Yeah. Yeah. Click. <laughs> it's not click and drag, it's click, click, drag. <laughs> it's click, click, drag. That is dumb. Okay. Anyway. So, so we have. But it's these... nice that you could select a whole bunch of them and drag them all. Yeah, no, for sure. And and the other nice thing about it too is a warehouse manager, you can look at this and that, and you know it it'll show you when it last refreshed. You can force refresh it, um, and you can tell it to you know scan for new new work or whatever. But it's showing you what's not assigned lines tickets. Um, there's a, a, a lot of good stuff here. I don't know why. Oh, so this is showing inactive because even though I'm in, I'm not logged into workbench picking. Okay. And so the way that works is I would go to wireless workbench, um, WWMS wireless workbench, put my workbench ID in. And it just auto... Or does it, how does that work? Does it have, you have to tell it? See, I now it just, shows that I'm active I and it you. says that I'm on transaction 17. I'm going to set 13. That was 14 a second ago, was it not? Oh, dude. Okay. So I set 14 to a priority pick. And what will happen is when I finish 17, it's going to take me to 14, supposedly. This is wow. I, th I think I killed it. And I don't know if this is because I'm trying to do workbench and the actual picking from the same. You done did break it. Oh, I broke it good. Oh. <laughs> Okay, there we go. It took me into a pick. Yay. That's that I must say that's what it's supposed to do. Yeah. So yeah, it takes you straight in. And I'm guessing it's because when I logged into it the first time, it still had not updated my session that uh, this was active. This is very non standard. You're not normally gonna do it this way, right? And so you can say it's already assigning me work to do. So remember it was supposed to be 17, 13, 14. But then as a warehouse manager, I went and flagged 14 as a priority. So what should happen is I go through and, and pick this out. And then I'm going to go ahead and deposit it in A9. Now, see, it's keeping me in the same order. It's not when you prior do a priority pick, it's it's going to wait till you have finished this order and then then move you up. Assuming that all took and didn't explode.
and there we go. See, now the next, like, I don't have to go figure out what I'm supposed to do next. I have that stuff in my in my wireless device and I, I, that drives me insane. Um, and as long as there's something in the device to do in the workbench, it's just gonna just keep picking. That's, that's all it's gonna get you to do. And so the way that that, um, the way that that reveals itself over here when we refresh, see 17's gone because it's been picked. And now I'm on the priority pick, which is 14, and that's why it got moved up. So that's, that's the deal with Workbench. It's one of these things where um, it takes a little bit to set it up. You can also look at your transactions uh, based on zone. Um, but once you have it set up and working, it is a really great way to manage work. In a smaller warehouse, like I can definitely see you got a couple of people picking orders and all your orders are pretty much the same. Set up auto assign. That way when a new pick ticket rolls off the printer, it's automatically gonna get assigned out to the next available picker. And, and the whole point being is there's not a lot of running back and forth to the desk to figure out what's supposed to happen next. You just keep picking until you run out of things to pick. And that's that's basically it. Let's see here. How deep in are we? Three hours Three and hours. seven minutes. What? That's farther ahead than I thought we would be. Um, let's talk about, um, or is there anything else that, that we could really hit on this? I don't think there really is. Yeah, no. No, but th this is, because some people, when they go to wireless, they decide, okay, we're going to, we're still going to do paper. I'm just going to, you know, and the user's just going to scan their next paper one. Workbench is the next level. Correct. Workbench is, hey, they don't know what they're about to go pick. We're just going to tell them what they're going to go pick. Exactly. And so a couple of things on that. Number one, you're absolutely right. That's what we normally see is people start off by, they have the wireless device in one hand and the pick ticket in the other. And that's okay. This is the next evolution beyond that. The benefit that we typically see in this is what you find out is, especially in larger operations, if you leave it to the picker to go grab a pick ticket, watch them very carefully. A lot of times they'll flip through and find the easy ones and take the ones that they want to do, not necessarily the ones that you want done. Or, or they misplace their, their stack of pick tickets or the or wind whatever. comes in. Yeah. Uh, we, we used to have a in, in the old days my old company i used to work at we had a pick ticket printer that the sales guys would print all the pick tickets to well every now and then the wind would come in and we find pick tickets months later oh, underneath wow. a shelf where the wind took it off um that's crazy where here i mean they're not done till they're done yep and, and you can see what they've done or are or, or not done but see what they still have left See, I was gonna get back to. Did I close that? I might have. Oh no. Yeah, and so we can just kind of. It won't take long for us to kind of run through the rest of the process, so you can see how it plays out. And this will actually be good because this will give us some data for the reports. And okay, now I'm going to deposit these to ship. And we're on to 13. Yep. Now, I will say it's important. This is the process that, that you're going to have, because if I'm just going through and picking a bunch of stuff, you know, I have to make sure that I'm not depositing mixed yes. pick ticket stuff together. Or, or if you don't, somebody's going to have to basically repick it when they go to ship it. All right. Do we, do we want to do shipping? 
in, I mean, there's a way to ship in the wireless warehouse, right? Or no, you still ship in. Well, you confirm. You could, if you have your system set up to allow printing packing lists, it'll prompt you to print a packing list mm -hmm. from wireless warehouse. But okay. shipment confirmation is still done either through the shipping window or you can use automatic shipping. Which, for people that are trying to automate out their warehouse, it might be worth spending a minute on automatic shipping. Um, but just to kind of show you now, there's nothing left in in this user's queue. It's gone, he's finished. And so, you know, you can very easily assign work again. And the other thing that I like too is um, you can um, you can balance between users. So as you start to get into the day and you look at it, you can go, well, this picker's got 50 lines left. This one's got 80. You can slide tickets between them that they haven't even seen yet mm -hmm. to try to balance that load off. Um, so anyway, it's I, I like it. I've always liked Workbench. Um, I think it's it's a great tool if if you manage it and do what you need to do. It it is one of my preferred features in P twenty one. All right. So let's before we jump to the reports, then let's talk automatic shipping. So this this feature to me, I think, is good when it is paired off with Wireless Workbench um, because you can schedule this to run like at the end of the day or at, or at night or whatever to say anything that's confirmable, it's been picked, it's been deposited, um, it's ready to go. Um, you can go ahead and automatically confirm all of these okay <clears throat> what i really like about it is even when it's running on a schedule you can apply business rules to it if you want to put some qa on it and we've done this before for people where we look at it and go okay one of the validations we have to run is everything has to be in a shipping bin if we can't determine that every item is in a shipping bin we're going to uncheck this. And then when the warehouse manager comes in the next day, it's their responsibility to figure that out. Um, another one was, uh, remember this one where they had a scenario where they had a, a certain class one set on like customers that needed to have their stuff double checked. And those could not go through automatic shipping. So we would check and say, hey, for this, you know, is the customer ID, is their class one set to QA or whatever it was. And it would not put those through automatic shipping. The warehouse manager would have to take the, their unconfirmed pick ticket list and go and, and physically check a QA checkbox and um, confirm it through the shipping window. Point being, just because you're using automatic shipping you can use it to automatically confirm a lot of stuff, but then you can use business rules to exclude certain things that meet criteria that you deem fits your business. So if we go in here and just select one of these. Oh, well, I got to set up. Okay. I got to set up, set up schedule imports and all that. So I'm not going to do that, but you save this and it confirms the shipment, creates the invoice, all done. Um, reports. Well, before you jump into reports, there's also um, some inquiries. Oh, yes. That's good. You know, yeah. So like, like if you're walking through your warehouse and you found a random item sitting on a table, uh, it's a, uh, yeah, item inquiry. If you scan that item, it'll tell you all the bins and the quantities where that item lives, I believe. And then there's also one for bin inquiry, which will tell you all the items uh, that live in that. You have to, yeah, you have to select it. Drill into detail. Yeah, there you go. I'm sorry. Yeah. 
So for some reason, if which never happens nobody ever just leaves a random box on the floor somewhere um it at least gives you where to should this live oh there's supposed to be 100 and receiving oh there's only 50 this box has 50 process of elimination yep um and ben inquiry or whatever it's called works kind of the same way it'll you'll scan the bin and tell you what items should be in it before i i i jump to that um you can toggle the view to look at it by lot or by bin. You can also reprint item labels from here. So if you have a damaged item label, the user can reprint the item label. There's a, You can also go directly into... I think there is a label reprint as well. Yeah, yeah. there's a label reprint too. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's bin... Bin content by item. Yeah. Which when you get into the screen, it's called bin inquiry. Why it's not called... Because bin content by item just sounds so much better than you know bin inquiry there we go um, which obviously you have a lot of items in that <laughs> in bin, it's a bin. it's a big bin very large uh, but you could easily come in here and type in rec like if you're not running i mean you should be running the report but if you type in rec and go well crap we still got something yeah what's going not on not put away just didn't get put even out. though yeah even though receiving still empty on physically so uh, I just wanted to Okay. Throw those All up. right. So so this is let let's do like a real world on that. All right. I hate that Joe. So I've got a item that says it's in the receiving bin, but my receiving floor is empty. Now right. what? So what I would do is I would go to Well, if you drill um, into the item info, it'll tell you what bins it's other bins. Yeah. Um, no, whoops, the drill. drill into item might be back. Oh no, it just tells you the lot. Yeah, so so check okay. this out though. What I would typically do in a scenario like this is I would do like um, inventory drill down. Now, my question is, if you have this user set up to a WMS only with that checkbox, do they have access to that? No, but I'm thinking about this more through like the warehouse manager is running the report to make sure those bins are empty ah, and it's not. Um, yeah. Um, so I can go in here and drill into the quantity on hand and start looking at these transactions and see what user executed on that so if i go in here to wreck and like okay there's 145 there um you know these are all ways of of figuring that out i think the wwms reporting will also um get you there but there's other fields that you can add to this to figure out the when the where and the who uh let's see here let's go to so we talked about wireless device uh, audit report and then you've got your wireless transactions report which is a good one and we can just say hey we want to look at all of i mean you can look at whatever you want we'll just leave it open and we'll run it for today. And now this is basically telling us everything that's going on, how long it took. Now there's ways to, users will figure out really quick how to make themselves look good with that. So I, I would say be careful about trusting that that's how long it took. Um, but you can pretty quickly start to flush out how things ended up like, oh, hey, look, there's a self put away to, uh, you know, of quantity 100. And it was done by that user. You know, this is all good information to know. Um, and maybe I should know this, but I don't. Mm -hmm. Is there a... Bin history 
like is there a way to say this item came into this bin moved to this bin moved to the, like is there yes does that it's, exists i think it's in i want to say it's in idd by bin but like does it tell you what bin it it came from what if not i believe you can figure it out um with database queries i mean i, I get that, that doesn't work for everybody but um so like see there there you go doesn't necessarily tell you where it came from but it's telling yeah. you who and when things uh who moved and when it moved um and what type of movement it was so that was just a put away and i think on that report i gotta close some of this stuff I got to close a lot of this stuff. Good night. It was inventory movement. Uh, see here, it's telling you wireless self put away. I was wanting to see if you can knock that report down to just like bin transfers. Here's something funny for you. So I found a bin inventory movement mm -hmm. thing. And you know what it does? You have to put a location on an item ID. Um, I'm, I'm looking for bin movement, not not item movement within a bin that's that's a bad label there's a few of those item bin records sorry i'm just going down a rabbit trail a rabbit hole of okay so yeah there's all item bin records with no quantity allocated will be primary deleted backup oh no, that's deletion sorry so I think, okay, I want to say that, like, and this is like not really intuitive, but if you were just looking at bin movements, you would knock this report down to just the ones that are considered inventory operations, mm -hmm. which I believe would include self, system, and group put away, I think. Uh, but you could just knock it down to the picks too and, And just say, hey, I just want to see, you know, what happened with sales order picking. And you would just get that. So that's a pretty handy report. <laughs> um, What's interesting, because there's actually a bin column on that report, <laughs> but it doesn't actually give you the bin. Okay, that was wireless transactions. Wireless terminal report is also a good one. So this shows you, and this is to Matt's point about people just picking any bin ID they want. Um, this gives you a pretty good look at, um, like here, this is a great example. Here's user ID, bin ID 48 is showing as active and the last login was in 2018. So this gives you a way to go in and kill out um, sessions that you know are no longer any good. You can just set those in as inactive and you're good to go. Um, you can knock this down to just inactive terminals. Um, you can inactivate all the selected ones, you know, just kind of how, however you want to do it. You can reactivate terminals if you need to. So what you find is like if people lose connectivity or something like that, their gun will be locked and they can't log back into the bin. That's usually why they try to create another bin ID. So if somebody does that, just tell them, look, don't, don't do anything crazy. Just let me know and I can jump yeah. in here and inactivate it so that you can log back into it. Okay. Then you've got, I think there's a wireless performance report. I don't even remember what's all in that. What was the wireless? Did we do the wireless audit? Report. Yeah, that was the first one that you were talking about that didn't have oh. the bins. All right, so this is kind of, it looks like it's giving you more of a summary. Does it have a... Yeah. So it's kind of showing you how many transactions per hour, how much... 
again, people have to be using the wireless devices in the right way for all of these times to mean anything. Right. Otherwise, you could get some really bad results really quickly. So just just be wary of that. Uh, let's see. All right, so we did bin content. The only other thing that we didn't really, that, that I say would be a lot of, or maybe the whole transfer pallet shipping and stuff like that. Um, but you kind of have to do some prep on that. I, I the transfer pallet shipping, I came from a company that would have, you know, 10 transfers, 15 transfers going to one location. So instead of having them to have to receive 15, you could build a transfer pallet all into one shipment and they just have to receive one pallet to get all those transfers in the system with the caveat that they can't adjust quantities. So if you say you sent a hundred, I have no choice but to receive a hundred and then I'm going to have to transfer it back or, or whatever else. Or inventory so, adjusted it if it's wrong or whatever. Right. Yeah. So that's in, the big in, downfall of it. In theory, it's great, but that, that's a big cat that, that's gonna be a lot of like you're just gonna have to trust like there's no then what you're gonna have nobody's gonna count anything because they're not gonna have a choice they're just gonna have to receive everything so i've not really ever messed with this and it looks like it doesn't want to be messed with because the screens what you click on uh i don't remember cross docking i i have no idea sure I whatever mean, it doesn't it really doesn't want to be it bothered. doesn't work it's tired <clears throat> um okay let's see here all right group picking and group pick tickets let's let's just talk about that a little bit um so the first thing to understand is if you're using the workbench you need to create your groups in the workbench because if you create a group outside the workbench, you can't pick it with the workbench, okay? <laughs> um, so here, this allows you to take pick tickets and group them together. Now, if you, I think this makes sense if you're not using workbench. And then I can save this. And all of this stuff now can be picked as a single unit, which means all of it falls into a single pick path. So like, I'm gonna take these two pick tickets and go pick them. I like group pick tickets for transfers. I like group pick tickets for, I've got five orders for the same uh, customer, same destination, whatever. I mean, I think it's good for that. If it's the same customer, yeah, I, I would have an issue with, again, I'm picking stuff that's for multiple customers, potentially. Yeah, I don't, I wouldn't, I personally would not group pick tickets that way. That's just me. Um, I would want to see them all go into the same place. Yeah, because I mean, if not, what you're going to have to do is essentially repick it once somebody brings over. Here's my cart of stuff. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> Because now you've jumped into another pick ticket. I have to make sure that, yeah, I don't know. No, this isn't the deposit bin. Now you're in the deposit bin. The other one was trying to pick the next one. Ah. Uh, because the idea is you pick everything and then deposit all. And then all. deposit all at the end, yeah. Right. But but maybe if you were dragging two bins with, I, I don't know. Well, like you said, group picking, if you're, if hey, go pick all of company abc's orders sure that makes sense but maybe they're not going to like the way that comes in either i don't know I, I i call it situational well the thing is though like what what does make it kind of work well is um and there you go see it's the group picking screen is different than the than the regular picking screen which is kind of why i prefer workbench because 
like it's one place to log in and the the user has the same experience all the time no matter what um but but if you're not using workbench there are things i i like group uh group picking for and remember if you're using the ship item label you know the label is going to have the correct order number or po number and all that stuff on it so you can keep it organized where you know i like this is if you're running around on a stock picker right and you're picking a bunch of small parts it's pretty efficient for that because it takes all five pick tickets and then it sends you through the warehouse one time and you come out with five tickets picked rather than basically starting over in the pick path every single time mm -hmm. oh let's see wireless Okay, I think we've been through all of that stuff. We're not going to go through tags because the system's not set up for tags. Yeah, okay. So then let's go back to WWMS and see if there's anything else in there we want to cover. Priority pick. Okay, so we have the workbench. We've been through that. So your transfer receipts your and your other tr your transfer picks and your production picks and your secondary process picks, they all basically work the same way as sales order picking. Um, system directed put away we did, self-directed put away we did. RMA receipts, very similar to the other receipt transactions. Um, we did the session defaults. We did printer admin. Uh, print shipping labels and print item labels. These are, you know, again, if you need to be able to reprint labels, this is the way to do it. Item and core we did. IQS, that's specific to an add-on. Inventory count, we didn't really talk about. We didn't really talk about inventory adjustment. Um, um, inventory count, I would probably... I think we need to get into a deeper conversation. Just about on cycle counting cycle in general. Counts, yeah. Counts, yeah. Um, also... Don't let people adjust with wireless warehouse. Really? It's so much fun. I mean, I can just make those, 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 that hundred items disappear. Now, if you, if it creates as an unapproved adjustment, I could see. Yeah. Reason for that. Like if you could say, you know, alert me when somebody creates a, unapproved adjustment or you know whatever but so this is kind of what you would expect right you get um now this is what's interesting is you're not doing the adjustment quantity you're doing what's left like right you're so that's something to be aware of but here's my problem with that is okay what if somebody else has got some picked got yeah i just to me it's right well if they've picked it and they've picked it with a wireless device technically oh that's true it wouldn't be in that bin anymore it shouldn't be did it actually post that adjustment let's go see see to me that's just insanity i i don't want i don't know to me i don't think things like that should be on on a gun or excuse me, on a wireless device. <laughs> yep, it's approved. Now I think you can control that. I, I gotta. I don't remember where you control it though. This is my I don't like it face. <laughs> you see that guy with the puppets? He's got the angry yeah. old guy. <laughs> Jeff Dunham. That's how I, Jeff Dunham. Yeah, Jeff Dunham. That's how I feel about that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. That's for receipts. Yeah, nope. Nothing there. Let's do... It might... I See, I want to say it's like... Is it not a user setting, is it? I, I don't think so. See, to me, that I just... just don't like I don't like that <laughs> I don't like that at all yeah see I think 
I think it's the on the fly. Like you have a choice if it's an on the fly adjustment. So like if you under ship and it prompts you to adjust out the remaining quantity that you can say system wide is approved or not. But if it's through the, the, um, if it's through the screen that's dedicated to that, I think it's going to go. And I don't think, yeah, I, there's no, um, there's no differentiation on an inventory adjustment being wireless or not wireless in the main approvals thing, which I don't really care for. But that, so you, if you defaulted to no, then that would hit that, every, yeah, but every that would hit every adjustment UI or wireless device. So technically what you could do is say default it to no. Yeah. And then if you had business rules, you could create a business rule on the, the full client screen that would set that checkbox to yes. When somebody enters a location ID or something. I would recommend doing a Dyna change and blocking WWS inventory adjustment. That's way too easy. I, I don't disagree. I, I think, you know, the heartache that can be, um, caused by errant inventory adjustments it's just well and, and you know if somebody did that adjustment today but we don't find out about it for two weeks mm -hmm. going back and going hey andy why did you adjust out those 50 two oh, weeks ago remember oh, oh and by then it. it's already on po yeah yeah we've already ordered 50 even though we it was just them. two shelves over somebody sat it on b2 instead of a2 yep cross docking still broke Okay. Just, just, just curious. That's okay. Cause I think I'm about broke. Yeah. I'm, I'm coming to the end. Um, and I, I, mean, I think we've, we've other than some of the situational stuff, I think we've about covered it all. Yeah. I mean, just like with anything in P21, getting there and playing and playing and playing and playing is going to be the, the way to go. And, and then maybe you launch with just picking orders or maybe you launch with just receiving POs. Um, remember, you don't have to just, oh, we're wireless. Everything is wireless now. Right. Yeah. Do, do it in a way that makes sense for you. Um, don't feel like you've got Thanks, to use Andy. every transaction or whatever. Oh, thank you. I ran out, I ran us out of pick tickets. So. <laughs> well, that's a sign if I've ever seen. Yeah, one. I think it's I think it's definitely time for us to hang it up. So look, we really appreciate everybody uh, hanging out with us on the live stream. Um, it, it's uh, really great that y'all came. I don't know what we're gonna do next week. Do you have any ideas? What are we gonna do next week? I mean, we brought up lots a few times. We need to redo items again. Um, I'm not ready for items. Cycle count, physical count. Um, we could play in the world of accounting and make a lot of accountants mad. Um, I'm trying to think what else. You know, if anybody watches this in the next couple days. Yeah, give us some suggestions. What do yeah. you want to see next? If not, we're just going to pick something random. <laughs> I mean, in, in all fairness, and again, I know we only have a few people watch, like this became because Indy oh, was last week, yeah, at, we, yeah, we got into all these conversations, questions. yeah, right. So, um, that's what we're trying to do with these. We understand that it's not always possible, but uh, yeah, if yeah. not, you're just gonna have to listen to us ramble and complain about stuff. So, for sure, okay. Well, we will post something uh, as soon as we come up with something, but we will see you guys back here next Tuesday, 1030 Central. Really appreciate everybody joining us, and we look forward to seeing you again in the very near future.